about a third to six. Drive of the Taunton State Texans here. And the fake handoff great defense. And that was intended for J.F. Thomas as that falls incomplete. Yeah, that's a name you're going to hear a lot today. One of their most targeted receivers of this Texan offense here. Now, that's the second time already this drive that we've seen that same exact RPO with the backside slant. Looks to be a predominant theme in their offense here as they got multiple weapons in the backfield that can run the ball. And on comes the place kicker here, number 39, Joey Martinez. As this is a very, very, going to be a very tough game with the conditions on the field as it is very windy as his kick up. Nope. good. And it hits the upright, and it is good. Carlton State takes a 3 nothing lead, and this is exactly everything that we were looking at last night, Jordan. Everything that we expected to be is already here. The outscoring of Tarleton State is something that is quite unmatched in the first quarter. Yeah, Tarleton, Tarleton State here, one of the most elite offenses in all of NC. NCAA Division II football. They've had nine games this season of 40 points plus. That is three games better than their previous record of six. So with McCants and Turner in the backfield, they are able to ground and pound and they find their, find their way in the end zone quite frequently as Turner has 22 touchdowns on the season on the ground. As he was close to having one on that last possession, as he broke one loose for a good game, and he's got that quick speed that's very sneaky and great to have as a running back. And he just powered through that secondary and that front line because he's a very patient runner, someone like we're also very used to seeing in number 23 go this afternoon, and that's Nate Gunn. Yeah, it's very true. Tarleton comes in with a very big offensive line, big mammoths of human beings up front, and a smaller back in terms and McCants, you can get lost behind them and make it very difficult for linebackers to get a read on them and play downhill. And that's what the quick pace of their offense, I would assume, was trying to do there. And here's a familiar face that we have back this week, and that is Terramina, as he takes it out across the 25 and is brought down by Mitchell Novak. Yeah, and here we go with Minnesota State offense and led by Ryan Schlippi. Yep. Today, I think one of the biggest themes is going to be what is the quarterback play going to give us here for Minnesota State? A little bit under par, if you will, for the body of work they've had all season long. A little bit of inconsistency and inaccurate passing, as we saw last week, missing receivers such as Zilstra multiple times and not being quite on target. As Gunn bounces it to the outside and gains four in that second down. Yeah, this is, this is going to be a matchup here for both teams. Teams. Both teams can run the ball quite well, and some might even say exceptionally well. And it's going to be a battle up front in the trenches because both teams are a predominant run team for the most part. Quarterback for the Tarleton Texans, 2,500 yards and 500 yards rushing. So much like Akawa here for the Mavericks, it's quite similar in style. Here is the handoff to Gunn as he breaks it for a first down and then some. And that's going to move the sticks and that's the Mavericks first down, first first down of this afternoon. Yeah, right there you're in this very Minnesota State right there running the power and downhill ground and pound game. That might be the subtle difference you'll see between these two teams here. Carlton's going to come at you with a bit more of the zone read, a little bit more of the RPO where Minnesota State's just going to come downhill, pull a backside guard a lot of the time. I really like this look that Minnesota State is showing because they don't do this a lot and that's not have a running back in the backfield and it's just an empty set as the tight end number 86 Tyler Schmidt and on the field and off the field he is one of the hardest working individuals that you'll find here for Minnesota State. This guy in the classroom does it all, has above 3.5 GPA. He is a leader on and off the field and someone you really want for your football team. Absolutely. A plethora of Mavericks throughout all of our athletics making the D2 academic uh, so we got a timeout here, a timeout on the defense for Tarleton State. 
But yeah, as I was saying, many academic All-Americans here for the Minnesota State Athletics in bunch for the football team. So that is very good to see the note that we got players that are making great conscious decisions on and off the field and putting uh, pride in their athletics as well as their performance on yeah, the field. On the football side alone, they have actually 20 members to make the All-Academic team. 54 out of the entire student athletes here at MSU, or at uh, Minnesota State, excuse me. And it's just great to see that Coach Todd Hofker cares about both on and off the field activities, and that's exactly what you want. Yeah, and you mentioned with uh, Coach Hofner and the rest of the staff, you just got to be pleased because you know you're bringing in quality young men to come and perform and lead your, and just lead your campus in all athletics. So set a good example for the rest of the student body. So coaches got to be pleased. They got 12 men on the field here. Get, they're disorganized. The ref just spotted it. Tarleton catches a break there. Could have been an easy free play. And one of those guys that we will talk about here in a minute as the handoff goes to Gunn as he bursts through and gets the first down for Minnesota State. And that's another Minnesota State first down. Yeah, you're going to see a lot of this. And it's a lot of big on big, man on man block. And there's no very little zone when it comes to the Maverick run game. They want to get after you. Big, mean, aggressive double teams. A lot of power. And right downhill at you. So this is where the game's going to be won and lost. Right now, Minnesota showing a little toughness as they were able to grind out two first downs. And Schlichty receiving some pressure. will hurl on up to Zilstra. And that is incomplete. Coverage there on by number two, Devin Haffer. A little bit of hand jockeying going on, but nonetheless, I think that's a good no call by the official. They were playing neck and neck right there, and Zostra unable to locate the ball and get his head around at the very least to find it, but second and long nonetheless. And Zostra is another one of those guys that you will have a look here, that he is another one of the all academic. Uh, all Americans here at at Minnesota State as he's lined up to the bottom screen, the bottom side of your screen here against Devin Haffer. And Schlichty's going to look his way for the second consecutive time as they wave it off incomplete. Both players looking up, trying to see if there was a flag. Um, Revs so far going to let him play. And going back to Zilstra there, he's going to have his opportunities. Now, as I spoke about earlier, can the quarterback play of Minnesota State locate and drop some accurate passes on him? Because last week, boy, he got overthrown three or four times where he was quite open and had an opportunity, but too much or too little at points. So look for Zilstra to get those one-on-one -on -one opportunities again here as it's third down and 10 here for Minnesota State. Schlichty looking for Justin Arnold and it was a miscommunication as Schlichty and Arnold were not on the same page there and here comes Casey Benarski for the first time here this afternoon. Yeah, so those are the situations today that you're not wanting to find yourself in. Those third and longs, and the weather plays a part, I believe, but at the same time, these are two top 10 ranked teams and you get in the third and long against defenses like these guys it's really tough to convert and you don't want to lose that field position game as that was a mental mistake I would think on the part of Arnold but nonetheless it falls incomplete and here's Casey Benarski's high punt into the wind and they're gonna let that one bounce and that does in fact take a Minnesota State bounce and that is down inside the five and here we go as Minnesota State defense is looking to put a three and out to here to the uh, Tarleton State offense. Yeah, got to find a way to slow them down, make them get back into the huddle here. If you allow them to go up and down the field with this no huddle offense in the running game they have, it's going to become quite difficult going later on into the game. But get that third down and long situation is where you got to win this field position battle today so getting those third and longs keeping them on the back side of their field is really crucial today more so than any other game and here we go with the dual threat quarterback Ben Holmes and that Tarleton State offense the handoff to Turner as he breaks free and he gets a first down and that'll move the sticks. Yeah, right there you can just see the patience and the vision he has. Both linebacker and corner for the Maverick defense came down into the A and B gap and filled them by able to have the patience and wherewithal to find the open and backside there. As Holmes looks deep 
and that's a nice coverage there intended for J.F. Thomas, and that's a nice coverage by Jack Curtis. Yeah, Jack Curtis having to step up big last week, made a bunch of incredible plays filling in, and right there, he used the sideline quite well to his advantage as he squeezed them there without the contact and made it a very tough ball to catch, so great job by Jack Curtis early on P.F. Thomas. And we are going to go in right now to O'Grady's keys of the game as Turner gets a couple there, and it's third down and six. Yeah, and when you look for Minnesota State here, some of the keys of the game, as always, is continuing the very good downhill man-on-man -man rushing attack they've had all season long. And then you got to come out to a much quicker start. Each game you go on in this tournament, the opponents get tougher and tougher as Tarleton takes their second timeout already. That could prove to be vital going on later into this first half here. But then also the pass defense and where where do these uh, backup uh, defensive backs stand for Minnesota State? they got to find a way to keep doing what they've done from last week and so far already early in this game with Jack Curtis and some of the reserves coming in and playing big minutes and big downs for the Mavericks. And then you look at Carlton say we spoke about it already. They they got a very dominant running game with two backs over a thousand yards. Turner Xavier Turner number 21 as we said has 22 rushing touchdowns on the year. So we can see already his elusiveness and acceleration in and out of the hole is a huge thing for the Tarleton Texans offensive line and offense in general. Then looking at the quarterback play for Minnesota State is how is that how is that going to be against a well-rounded secondary for the Tarleton Texas here. And as they come out here from the timeout in the back is Xavier Turner, not other. And one of the things is you got to keep that hole detained. And that's the one thing here that we got to look for. As he steps up, we receive some pressure. He's getting chased down by Zach Robertson. Alongside him, the big number 95, Michael Buto. Yeah, beautiful job there. Almost got lost inside there, but able with a nice spin move to get back outside. And good job by both the corner and the free safety coming down and locking up and not letting those receivers get into their scramble rules and find open area on the field. Good job. And that's exactly what the Minnesota State defense needed right there. Make them punt and keep good field position. And on to kick here for Tarleton State is the big punter, six foot five, Ron Reed. Back deep for the Mavericks is Justin Arnold. He receives it at the 45. Bouncing around like a windshield wiper. He moves up the field and is corralled at the 41. And the ball is loose. out. And they will say, in fact, he is down, and Minnesota State will continue to have the ball. Yeah, good thing there. That was a little dicey. Great move right off the bat by Arnold. But right now, you got to keep those bear claws on that football. Turnovers in any football game are crucial and usually prove whoever has more of them to be the victors. So giving the ball up in a playoff game is quite obviously a big no-no and something that both teams are going to try to minimize all day today. One of the key players here for Charlton State is he's lined up in on the far side on the defensive end, and that's number 10, Gary Moore. And here's the handoff to Gunn as he's brought down by number 90. Tyrell Thompson. Yeah, this is going to be a big test today, and so far, big test today for the inside lineman, interior lineman for the Maverick offense. It's going to be a tough test because these are some big boys, and they know how to play the run pretty well, and they've had a good body of work all season, Tarleton has, at stopping the run, and right now, Minnesota State doing a great job in the middle of creating some creases and giving Nate Gunn some good room to run. Gunn, finding a hole. Mm. Out, and that's a nice shoestring tackle by number 29, Jay Edwards. Yeah, Jay Edwards, I don't think he necessarily realized it, but that was a touchdown save and tackle right there as Arnold was coming up to seal it, but good hustle there. But even better job by the left side of that Maverick offensive line. Evan Heim and Hunter Topple just totally caving down that left side and letting Nate Gunn bust open for a big first down run. And one of the things that we found amazing as of last night, the last two games that they played in the playoffs, Tarleton State's rush defense. And that's a stat that is completely and utterly staggering 
as they've only allowed a negative one rushing yard as Gunn bounces it to the outside and is brought down by number four, Ronnell Wilson. Yeah, and that, that stat both had me and you both flabbergasted because you, you think you're playing the best of the best competition. And sure, maybe these teams they played in the earlier rounds aren't quite the the horse that Minnesota State is, but regardless, the whole your two playoff games to a negative one total rushing yards, that's staggering, and that shows you're doing something right in the front A. But so far, Minnesota State bowing out their chest and showing they're not afraid of that stat. And I think it has to do something with the play of that man right there that got the initial pressure there on J.D. Akawa, and that's Gary Moore. Yeah, you got to like what Akawa brings to the table in this matchup. Having a more versatile run game and more options, as you can see, the jet motion there. And they're going to throw these wrinkles at you. They want to get this very stout Carlton State defensive line and linebacker core moving side to side. And you never want to let linebackers play strictly downhill and make easy reads. So expect to see more and more of that in many different formations that they're throwing at them so far today. demand in motion. Akawa looking a little pressure as he hypes it for the end zone and that is way incomplete and outside the back of the end zone and that will be a fourth down. Yeah, quarterback play again for the Mavericks. Just just not there. Two two times now, one by each quarterback. Complete miscommunications. We had a deep poster out to the middle of the field there, and Akawa was expecting some kind of corner route or maybe even a fade there, but no one in the vicinity. Uh, they need to get that figured out here quickly because they're wasting possessions here with just mental mistakes here as Bedarski here to attempt a field goal. And the 44-yard attempt from Casey Bedarski is no good. Oh. And it was wide right. It had the distance, but it's no good. Yeah, it's tough. That's two possessions now where they've gotten into plus side territory, but have came up with no points. You know, playoff football, it's win or go home, do or die. And empty possessions are quite honestly one of the worst things you can have here. Third and long situations and empty drives will really hurt a team early on. As Tarleton gets the ball back in pretty decent field position here. Yeah, one of the things is in college you get it from where they snap the ball not where they kick it unlike the NFL so that's a little bit of a difference and one of the things that you saw Jim Harbaugh was confused about a couple years when he made the transition yes. to the NFL and that was pretty funny as that pass from Ben Holmes was complete to number 18 Savon Wallace and that's a first down for Tarleton State yeah, they're catching Minnesota State here and a lot of man defense and they're having trouble with that RPO and here's Turner, stopped at the line of scrimmage by number 30, and that's Kate Johnson. Yeah, beautiful job by Kate Johnson. That was a good read of the backside guard coming around. Good kick out, but Kate able to find the hole in which they were trying to attack and shut it real quick. As that was a gain of one, second and nine for Tarleton State on their own 43. False start. And there's a false start, and that looked like to be on the right guard Chase Levesay. Yep, got a little antsy. Probably probably had a tough hard count in there. And he wanted to get downhill quick there. And now back him up five. And as, Jordan, as an ex-offensive lineman, is it pretty easy in these type of games to have your adrenaline rushing so you're a little bit pumped up? And is it a little easier to get discombobulated when it comes to memorizing the plays and sometimes like that? Or is, it, is that just me being someone who's never played the game? Oh, no, absolutely. You know, offensive linemen, it's very tough because uh, as many coaches in my day would call it being a cerebral assassin. As much as you think of them as being big bullies, there's a lot going on in their head, especially right there in the type of the offense that Texans run in an RPO. You got to know your zone assignment, who you're working to in the second level, but also having the wherewithal too of the snap count because the Texans are going to try to mix up that hard count to a quick count. You're going to get many different things here, and you got to keep your head in there to not get beat like that. And the pressure on the outside from Michael Palmy is that pass from Ben Holmes to J.F. Thomas as he's looking his way quite a few times early on. Yeah, you can tell he's very tall and got the lanky speed there, 
but Curtis got lucky that the pressure was on because he got turned around and Thomas was quite wide open there. If the ball had a little bit more mustard on it, that could have been a big play for them. And as we're so not surprised for Tarleton State, Tom's starting to take shots now. Yeah. As that depleted secondary for Minnesota State with out there starting a cornerback, the senior number 36, Keyshawn Davis. Yeah, it's tough when you lose a leader like that and a guy that just knows the system very well and has a strong knowledge of where people need to be and has a mental awareness of recognizing things that teams throw at them from film study. So, so far so good. Couple, couple of incidents there on the last play where it could have cost them, but nonetheless, the pressure, pressure solves all those problems in the secondary a lot of the time. So we'll see how the secondary keeps playing here throughout the rest of this game. And Minnesota State will be led out for Slick Deep's second drive of the afternoon. And they will start at their own 22. Got to, you got to hope that we can connect on some of these shots downfield because if you get stuck in the short passing game and just running the ball, it makes it really easy for teams to tee off on you. And Gunn has his number called yet again, and he goes for a gain of three, brought down by Tavarius Owens. Yeah, they got some big boys up there on the defensive line for the Texans. Number 95, Tyrell Thompson, and number 45, David Fabupo, are two big human beings that take up a lot of area, and it's tough to block with a one-man block there. So we'll see how that goes, see if they get them moving more side to side with some stretch runs here. As Gunn slipped a little bit, but regained his foot, footing, excuse me, and he falls forward for a gain of four, and it's third and short. Yeah, that's one thing. We saw grounds crew out here shortly before the game. They were out here all walking around and checking out the turf. They might have been having some trouble with just how frozen it was as they were spraying. You can see some of the bright green that they were spraying down earlier this week. So... We'll see how that plays out here going forward. I'm sure it's not the softest of ground. And this is a big early first down or third down conversion here. As that's a nice tackle, but it won't be enough as the senior number 88, and that is Trevor Nissen, will get the first down. That's a nice tackle by number 29, Jay Edwards. That it was, and he, he flies around all over the field, and he's going to come up and be in contention to make those plays, but got to give credit to the offensive coordinator, coordinator for the Mavericks, Joe Bershorner. That's a great job and a great play call to dial up there at that point in time as you've been running the ball downhill. A little play action, get him moving side to side. And, and here's Terramina as he sees his first action as he gets back to the line of scrimmage brought down by the combination of linebackers Rondell Wilson and the first time we mentioned his name EJ Speed. Yes, another another Tarleton defender that has made many plays for them on that defense and right there shows why. Trevor Nissen coming off the field a little shaken up. It looks like his left knee as the tackle was attempted and then again talking injuries here. You gotta wonder where uh, Taramina is at health-wise after tearing his knee meniscus and what, what kind of comfort level he has. Schlichty looking for Zilstra and Zilstra is trying to gain some extra yards and that's a nice tackle by number two, Devin Heffer. Yeah, good effort there. Both men, that's a tough guy to bring down by yourself. But that was a great job of holding on and able to get him down himself there. And that's good. Get Shane Zilstra the ball early because he's a playmaker within his hand and he's quite shifty for a bigger wide receiver. And that was a gain of five. Third down and five as the clock dips under 150. And Terramina is back in the game and it's kind of so so real to see him and he's just a football player as they look for a screen and it's tipped by number 95 Tyrell Thompson. Yeah that was a good job by Tyrell there if he didn't get his hands up and hit that that could have been a big play for the Maverick offense but nonetheless hands got up swatted it down and that'll be another fourth down and a punting situation for the Mavericks. As the flurries do start to fall here in Mankato, we were expecting this all along here on this day, but it was, uh, it was mainly supposed to come late, la uh, late last night and early into today, but it just kept pushing back and back and breaking up. And back is number four, 
Samari Manning, and we haven't called his name much in the passing game as we thought we'd call his name quite a bit, but that has been not the case. Yeah, slow start a little bit for both offenses, really. Maybe a little bit more yardage there by the Texans, but I still think both teams are still kind of feeling each other out a little bit, kind of poking and prodding and seeing what, what might be available down the road here. Both teams have had some pretty decent success on the ground, and the Texans have really gotten after the Mavericks here in the middle of the field with multiple RPOs that have gone for 15 yards plus, and they come out in a big double tight set here, a new look for the Texans. And the first time this afternoon, we will see the back Daniel McCants as it's thrown out Ben Holmes, and that's for his wide receiver, number 17, Baxter Curvin. Yeah, Jack Curtis is going to have his hands full because Minnesota doesn't always or sometimes, if any, flip their corners. They don't have one guy they think can match up with the best. So they're going to test that young Jack Curtis there over on that side and see necessarily what he's made of. And McCance's first carry only goes for a yard as it's third down and three. Yeah, this is these third downs, these are the... Quite honestly, it's probably going to be the downs where the game's won and lost because both defense very stout up front. Who can get the most third down conversions and stay in contention? And Ben Holmes goes back again to number 17, Baxter Curvin, as he gets a first down in game of six. Yeah, they're playing a little bit. Or we're going to take what you give us right now. Back to back times, Curtis was more than a little bit more than 10 yards off the receiver, now five, and taking advantage of that space. And on the second consecutive play, Ben Holmes will look to pass the ball as he's in 10 for number four is Samari Manning. Nice coverage there by number four, Tyshawn and Brooks. Yeah, good job by Tyshawn and uh, not not falling for that double move and the up and out route there. Good job keeping his hands within distance to feel the receiver and the uh, quarterback just had the air, ma air mail it out and over the receiver's head of Manning. I know Tyshawn and Brooks, he's got to have a lot of pressure. He probably has to know it in his mind that he's got to have himself a winning game as that ball was just outside the reach of Samari Manning. He's got to have himself a quite yeah. day on the defensive end when it comes to guarding their number one wide receiver in Samari Manning. Yeah, and the one thing you can do to slow down that passing attack, of course, is get pressure. If you can get pressure on quarterbacks that have a strong receiving core and can sling the ball around, that really thwarts any progress there. So it's put a little bit more pressure on this Maverick defensive line today to help out and help, help that depleted secondary. And on a third down and 10, they'll hand it off to McCants, and he's stuffed right there by number three, Zach Robertson. Yeah, good job by stringing him out and not letting any gap pop wide open. And that's one thing we're seeing so far today in both Turner and McCants. Both have great vision and are able are able to see the hole very well. And uh, you can see there the Maverick defense able to string it out. But how they keep defending this run offense of the Tarleton Texans could prove to be the vital key or source of how they're going to win this game. As you can see, we come to the end of the first here uh, gonna get another fourth down punt here what well, offense is gonna make the big plays here and break this wide open so right now both teams still as I said feeling each other out but someone's got to come up and make some big plays here because both defense are gonna make it quite tough on each other to get any points going and as we take a look here it's the end of the first quarter Daniel McCants is one of the way that will end it we'll be right back with every football on NBA Network second quarter action as teams flip sides here as it's fourth down and here's Ron Reed on the punt for Tarleton State back deep none other than Justin Arnold. Reed's punt was close to being blocked and my goodness is this a good one. Arnold will take it out from the 22 and he gains five as a flag does come in after the play. Yeah late flag here I think they may get Get Minnesota State with a hold. Yep, they are going to get a holding call on the return team. Minnesota State 
uncharacteristic unca move there by Brady Tuckner, number 33, I believe, is the one that's going to get called with the hole as he was trying to block the gunner for Tarleton Texans there. Let's see what the actual call is going to be here. I do believe it is a hold, though. And one of the things is we're going to take a look at the first quarter. No, a block in the back. That'll push back the Kawa and the Maverick offense. And as we take a look here, the biggest key that we said for Minnesota State is the rushing. And they already have 10 attempts for 43 yards, and that's something that's quite incredible right now against this rushing defense that Tarleton State possesses. Yeah, both teams are going to keep going after. They think that each team, each team believes they have the advantage there against each defense, and it's proven to be true so far as uh, both teams until uh, up until this point have over 40 yards rushing. So they're really getting after it on the ground game, but so far it's been a game in between the 20s, and no one has been able to quite get into the red zone and have legitimate scoring opportunities other than that very first drive by the Tarleton State Texans, of course. Man comes on late in the field. And here's Gunn for the second consecutive play as he falls forward for a uh, gain of nothing, it looks like. And now it's going to be third down and three. Yeah, one thing here that I've noticed from the Tarleton Texans, I don't know if it's on the coaching staff or on the players, but they've had multiple times now where they don't know who should be on the field in that formation or if the coaches know who needs to be out there. So let's see if they can get that figured out here. That almost benefited them on that play there, having the man running on late. And here we go again for the second time already in this ballgame. We see Minnesota State has an empty backfield. Akawa looking for Arnold. He's got to complete for a first down and brought down by Jay Edwards as he's in for another tackle. Yeah, that was a good job by Akawa. Looked over to his right, saw nothing was there. Came back across the field to find a wide open Arnold up in the flat and makes a nice laser. Sticks it right on him and a good Minnesota first down here. Snow, snow starting to fall and I'm sure it's getting colder out there. Let's see how the Texans handle that. You saw a lot of the players with no shirts on early in the game. I don't know if they're trying to prove something or it really doesn't bother them, but this weather may have a factor. As a Kyle looks for his back Pribble, and that is Edwards' fourth tackle and back-to-back -back plays. He's got two. Yeah, that was a hard hit. Yeah, good job coming screaming downhill and not falling for that play action on the backside, but nonetheless flying downhill and delivering quite the pop on the running back. And that was nice closing speed by Jay Edwards as it didn't look like anybody was within 10 yards of Pribble, but then all of a sudden here comes Jay Edwards and he put the pop on Pribble. And that went for a gain of nothing in second down and 10. And here's the handoff to Gunn as he slips and falls and gains and loses a yard, actually. Yeah, you're seeing the footing here. It's starting to become a little bit more problematic. I don't know if they got to put in some of the longer spikes and go to the three-quarter inch here, but that's about the second or third time Gunn has had trouble sticking that foot in the ground and getting north here. And there's one thing I'd like to point out. One of the talks around here on campus is the voting for the dome that could be possibly put up. The voting is on December 4th, which is, I believe, Tuesday of this upcoming week. And it won't be paid by the taxpayers. It's just going to look like it's going to be the students are just going to have some fees. And you read more into that, and that's something that should be brought up. And it's going to be for the whole community, not just Minnesota State uh, University sports. If, that's, if, that, if I'm saying it correctly. Yeah, you know, this is one of those things. you got a very strong athletic tradition here at Minnesota State. Multiple teams playing in uh, postseason play here. And you've got a beautiful Taylor Center. And these things help the, provide the all-around experience for the student-athletes as well as the rest of the campus here. And when you can build facilities that facilitate um, easy indoor practices and give people a chance to keep participating and to think for a football team as things are getting physical here on this punt return and you think of a spring ball oh and a personal foul is coming the way of number 43 
uh, when you have a facility like that for football in particular, to have your spring ball indoors and have nice conditions, and you can really accomplish a lot more. And then for the community to have a nice place to come in and have you know rec recreational sports for on campus and people in the community, it really adds value to the overall experience of the residents here in Mankato as well as the entire student body. So in my humble, hopeful opinion, is that this. So they do get the unsportsmanlike conduct fans cheering for him to be kicked out of the game. I didn't necessarily could tell what was happening in that scrum here on the near sideline. But going back to the Dome, it's just something that can add great value to everyone's life in athletics here at Minnesota State. And maybe one day Old Blakesley Stadium will get a renovation too. But as of right now, I really hope that passes for everyone involved in Maverick Athletics in the Mankato community. And one of the things that I like about Blakesley Stadium is how old and the history behind it is McCants carries it for a gain of two as he's swallowed up at the 32. Yeah, you know, I'm all about tradition too, but at the same time, there is a certain, you need to stay up with the times, if you will, and and it's, it serves its purpose, and don't get me wrong, but it would always be nice to see a little improvements around here, especially when you got a football team like this that has been performing outstanding over the last five years and has a pretty good body of work to prove that maybe they are deserving of this. And here's McCants as he bounces it to the right side, and he's a lot of the sidelines, and he is gone, and he's pushed out by number 30, Kate Johnson, and number 49, Alex Gettle. And it looks like the flag here, they're going to probably get a hold, I think, because it was by, a, if I'm not mistaken, it was either 75, I believe, came on the pull there for the Texans offensive line. It was on the receiver, excuse me, but he got a little bear hug on the corner on that block, but nonetheless, they're going to back him up 10, and we'll replay second down. And that would be on number 18. Get a beat on the ball, and he's at the one yard line making that catch, and the Mavericks lose the game. Instead, Corey Brent knocks it away, forces a 40 yard field goal. Team like Carlton, with these kind of offensive threats that are able to jump out on you very quickly, as we've seen already in the first half. And this is um, a little bit of uncharted territory, if you will, for the Mavericks being down in a first half. You just last time I believe was against Augustana very early in this season, and right now Tarleton taking.
taking advantage of a lot of this man coverage and loose footing on the field, and their offense is clicking quite well here. As Terramina receives it from the seven, he's looking to bounce up. He's down the left sideline, and he's rushed out of bounds at the 45, and that's a nice return for Justin Terramino. Welcome back, sir. Yeah, uh, how one can do what he did to his meniscus and still come out and be playing like this, and he looks the, like he has pretty full confidence in the stability of that knee as he busts off a nice return, setting up the Maverick offense with beautiful field position at their own 45. As he's only removed two weeks from surgery, which is something that is completely and utterly astonishing as they were only looking to get him back for the championship round as gun bounces it back and he's brought down that's a nice tackle from behind by number 45 david david van Goupel. yeah mavericks having a or running backs for the mavericks rather having a bit of a tough time there getting north you saw gun stick his feet in the ground and just sluggish i don't i don't know if that's the footing or maybe there's something going on but having a little bit of trouble here just getting Getting up and getting through the hole. And one of the things last year that we should probably bring up is Gunn is the handoff and he bounces in and Gary Moore is the first to bring him down alongside him is number three and that looks to be the um, Trey Johnson, the defensive back. Yeah, this uh, 1,022 mile journey from Stevensonville, Texas in the Dallas-Fort Worth area seems to be a non-factor as this whole defensive unit is uh, getting to the ball together as a team and having great group tackling and not allowing a lot of second chance yards by the ball carriers for the Mavericks. As it's third down, and here's Gunn, as he's got some running room, and he's being chased, chased down by EJ Speed as he knocks the ball loose, and that's a gain of 20 for number 23, Gunn. And of course, the good old announcer curse, as soon as you say something's not happening and get into those second chance yards, Gunn able to break out of some easy arm tackles and get the Mavericks on the 25 on the verge of being in the red zone for the first time here just over halfway in this second quarter. As Minnesota State is lined up first and 10 at the opponent 25. Hand off to Tiramina as he bursts through, and that's a nice gain of five as he's whipped down by Gary Moore. I think that's what they need to do more of. I know, and we know, if you follow Maverick football, they like to run a lot of power offense, bring in a lot of motion, trying to keep the defense unset before the snap of the ball. And right there, they had the defensive end on the backside just scrape downhill, but the quick acceleration from Terramina as they get this all in because of it. Now, this is the fourth time by the Tarleton State Texans that they've had 12 men on the field or just terrible communication, and that that, that could prove to be a big factor with just under eight minutes to go here. They have no timeouts left, and the Mavericks driving here. As this wind and the flurries are coming in in a very, very strong storm-like fashion now. And you can feel it's the snow yeah. inside the shed. Exactly. And this is one of the best parts about it as the wind is pushing it up through, and there is a little bit of a gap from the ceiling from the window. And it's kind of nice, actually, because it makes you feel a part of the ladder, and it makes you feel like you're a part of the fans. I gotta say, when you look over at the, uh, the Tarleton side, you just look at all the blankets, and, yeah, yeah. Like and then you look here, and you're like, you see students in overalls and sweatshirts, yeah. and it's just so fun to see. This is what college football yeah. is all about, if I'm not right. Oh, you're 100% right, and I think maybe some of the adults have a uh, certain type of drink that they're drinking to keep them a little bit warm here in this weather. But the rowdy atmosphere here at the Blakesley in full force right now as the Mavericks driving into scoring uh, scoring position here on this drive. Jordan, you're talking about hot chocolate and coffee, am I right? Right, maybe mix it with something <laughs> else, but you know, that's, oh, and the ball comes out! And that's a fumble by Gunn as that was put to the 
as that was put to the turf, and that's recovered by number 25 on Tarleton State, and his name is Ed Hayes. As Ed Hayes comes up with the football inside the 10, or in fact, Tarleton State will get the ball back at the five yard line. You know, and I almost said something about it on Gunn's big run there to get him down to this territory. As Gunn got caught from behind by speed on that play, he did punch that ball out. And again, a carrying a little bit with one arm and not protecting it. The Tarleton defense swarming to the ball and punching it out. A big play there by the Texans. As here comes back in, Xavier Turner, as he bounces it to the outside, but cannot get free from Kate Johnson as he brings it down for a game four. Yeah, if Kate Johnson wasn't able to get that tackle there, boy, he had some room and he had a receiver out blocking for him on the edge. That could have been trouble, but good job by Kate Johnson getting wrapped up and getting him to the ground. As he had a lot of daylight to yes. come, as you were completely correct. As it looks like the Zamari Manning yet again, as that big fella's having himself quite an afternoon in the last two series, and he's having his way with number four, Ty Shot and Brooks. Yeah, you're, it's a really tough thing. This RPO brings a lot of challenges to team to opposing defenses here and they're getting stuck in no man's land you're getting the man coverage all by himself out there and against a big body wide receiver that's a tough slant to stop being an undersized guy comparatively yes he had the man uh man and trust it man. yeah Xavier Turner just gave uh Parrish Morrow, what his name was all about, and he just went helmet to helmet football, and he made him aware. As Ben Holmes looks for his number one target, Jamari Manning, as he's brought down by Jack Curtis. Yeah, Manning proving to be a big factor here. His big body just is making it tough for these smaller corners for the Mavericks to get around him. That's one tough thing, much like in basketball. The big centers and power forwards able to block him out, box him out, and go up and grab that rebound if you want to see it that way. As Turner runs right into his offensive line, and we have a helmet down as Michael Palmy will have to come out of the game because his helmet did come off for one play. Yeah, get it, it's getting a little chippy out there. Tarleton coming out and showing this weather, and we don't care that you're the number one team. We're going to play you like we've played every other opponent here. And the defense reeling just a little bit for the Mavericks here. Don't quite have an answer for these big receivers in the running game so far. And he looks for his wide receiver, number 88, J.F. Thomas, as that was over the big fella, the six foot four, one eighty shot four. You know what's kind of amazing for Tarleton, not so much the Mavericks, is they've come back to that same RPO with a backside slant and the pulling the backside guard, and they've oh, they could have completed almost every single one of them if it wasn't for some errant throws. As it's third down and seven here for Tarleton State and he's looking the way up that's a nice pass breakup by number 17 in goal yeah I think uh, defensive coordinator Jim Glogowski got with his defensive backs and goes hey we got to play a little bit tighter here we can't be allowing this space because as, as we've seen on this drive and a few before if you let these big receivers have any kind of space and make it easy for them to get that catch they're not only going to get by it but they're also very tough to bring down but good job by Jack Curtis there on that play and if you were looking live head coach Todd Witten was having a little bit of delay as he saw Minnesota State's uh, special teams unit go out there very early and he kind of sat there and was like here I'm going to make you sit there and wait about this for a minute because if I really want to wow. do this as Justin Arnold is going to let that one go as that one's caught at the two yard line by number 27 here Blake Daniels and that could be a costly mistake by Justin Arnold yeah kind of an old rule though you put your heels on the 10 and if it's going by you're going to most of the time let it bounce but I think you're right there that one I was going to make it very tough sledding here as the conditions are not slowing down whatsoever here we're going to see how this becomes a factor for both teams because both team Minnesota State may be used to the temperature wise but this snow is coming down the hardest it has all year here at the Blake 
and as we take a look here is the wind is just whipping around the snow and we have a little bit of delay in action as they're getting the football switched out as the clock is just one tick under six minutes to go and if you're JD Akali you gotta feel some sort of pressure here if you can waste about five minutes off the clock march down the field and get some sort of points on the board that would be very crucial and beneficial to your offense to go into halftime with a little bit of something to go off of yeah and you know the quarter we mentioned at the beginning of this game good job creating some breathing room there and it's getting really dicey out on the edge here. But we got to see something out of this quarterback play here for the Mavericks. And both of them had great regular seasons in their own ways. And so far through the playoffs in the last regular season game, it's just been the inaccuracy and the miscommunications of these players, um, of the quarterbacks and these wide receivers, and not connecting like they were early on. As Gunn for the second consecutive play goes for a gate of four as it's third down and two inside the 15 for Minnesota State. Yeah, and looking at some of these stats here, this Carlton State has a great, great game plan offensively so far. They see a bit of a depleted secondary with some younger corners in there, and they've already, they're almost at 200 yards. They're at 174 yards in the passing category here, and they're really taking advantage of it so far. Well, it all had to be that, that 174 passing yards had a lot to do with that 68-yard touchdown from Holmes to Samari Manning, and that's what gave the uh, Tarleton State the 10 nothing lead as it looks like they will, in fact, give it to Minnesota State as Gunn gets the first down for the Mavericks, and that will just send the change in here comes Akala and company. Yeah, Minnesota State already over 100 yards on the ground here. And that was a very big first down for not only the fact of field position. Keep the ball a little bit longer because if you have to punt from inside your own 10, especially going into the wind in this weather, as I believe we're going to have a false start here. And it looked to be on the right tackle, Jared Goosen, if I'm not mistaken, because he's the one that got pushed to the floor. Yeah, a little bit undisciplined football so far by the Mavericks. Some penalties that they don't usually make. Players pointing a, a, that it's against Tarleton. We'll find out right here. So, basically, if I understand what was happening right, that was he was either talking or shouting out... Um, uh, like, uh, like a hard count or something trying to distract the Maverick offensive line or throwing out some kind of distraction if you will that is certainly unsportsmanlike and are a, they called delay a game there as that will only give the Maverick or uh, the Minnesota State five yards as the handoff is the gun as he goes forward for it looks like a gain of two and he's brought down from behind by number 45 David yeah, that was some very, very quick acceleration off the ball by Fangupo. For a big man to play down the line and get the hands of the offensive lineman off you that quick, that was quite impressive there and shut down that run play very quickly. Fangupo reminds me a lot of the old defensive tackle for the Minnesota Vikings, and that was number 93, yeah. big Kevin Williams. As he was a big guy, but he got a lot of hand jabbing and stuff at the line. As a cow will take it, as he eludes some tackles and is brought down by number 24, Prince Robinson. And I think that's what the Mavericks need to take more advantage of, because much like for Gunn having a tough time getting his feet set and getting going here, that's tough when you got a scrambling quarterback out in space for defenders to come up, break down, and make a solid tackle. As you saw, he was able to slip a open field tackle there and pick up a big first down for the Mavericks. And as a Cowell will get to draw yet again as he stuffed right away by number five, EJ Speed. Yeah, just not a good job by a Cowell there seeing the field. That was a good job by the offensive line and running back creating a seal, but he saw something there and decided to tuck it inside when he had a bit more pasture to roam through on the outside there. Right now, the Mavericks averaging just just over five yards a clip in the rushing game here. But 
struggling once they get down into scoring range here. As here is Gunn, as he bounces off a lineman and falls forward for a game of one. Yeah, this defensive line, for as big as they are, they are quite athletic and do a good job of playing playing gap to gap and making it tough sledding. They do a good job of not crashing down too fast on the backside as well, allowing an easy, easy bounce, if, if you will, for the running backs of the Mavericks. Playing very position, well positioned football here for the Tarleton defense. And it seems like Gunn is not used to not having those holes open for him as Akala looks for Justin Arnold and they're going to say that one bouncing to Arnold's arms incomplete. Fourth down for Minnesota State and here comes the punting unit. Yeah, they, they have not found any kind of congruency here on offense today. And we all know this is playoffs, do or die. And right now, they're playing a very formidable opponent here in the Tarleton State Texans, who have had an answer for every wrinkle that they have thrown at them so far. I will be very interested to see what the staff of Minnesota State does here coming up at halftime to make some of these adjustments as we've flown through this first half with the amount of running we've seen. And, and a, fake. a fake punt, Casey Benarski will take it himself. He's got some running room as he breaks a few tackles. And they're looking for the ball, but that won't be necessary as Casey Benarski. And that's the play that Minnesota hey. State is looking for here to get them going. And that, just, that chicanery right there just gave me some goosebumps because that was the last thing I was expecting here. But when you least expect it, as it goes, good things will happen. Every one of the punt return team for Tarleton had their back turned and it wasn't before he already had the first down that they realized that the punter had the ball and now the Mavericks will take a timeout here which is a very good call here you got all three slow them down now we're in business here and we can get a good good formation in there a good set and hopefully get a touchdown here to get the Mavericks back in this because up until then all momentum was with the Tarleton Texans there not much going the way of the Mavericks and they're inside the Tarleton 35 and here comes Ryan Schlichty as he'll get the call for this stretch of the woods here and we, we're going to take a look at halftime here about Minnesota State not being in this type of situation before is they're shut out currently 10 to nothing as they find themselves under almost a minute 10 here to go in the first half and we're going to take a look to see what Ryan Schlitte can do to get points on the board here for the goal. Yeah you know as much as some of the inaccuracy by these quarterbacks, the receivers as a whole have not necessarily done the greatest job of getting separation here as these Tarleton defenders have been very tight coverage so far. Looks like number five, 95 is lined up in the neutral zone, but nonetheless, the uh, ref is not going to throw the flag as I was looking right down the line. And Schlitty had his pass was intended for number 84, Shane Silstra, and that one is dropped. And that's something you don't see from Zosha yeah. too often. And just as I said, they need to create separation. Zilcher gets about a yard and a half, and he's going to be kicking himself a little bit that he just dropped a very easy and wide-open pass there. But nonetheless, that's a tough break for the Maverick offense. But for Zilcher, that yard and a half is sometimes all that you need. And that was and actually probably one of the best passes I've, I've seen yeah. Ryan Schlichty throw this year as that was a dime of a throw. And that was just right into the hands, and it was just a little bit of a drop there by Zilstra. And here's Schlichty as he drops back to pass. Steps up in the pocket looking to run as he's flushed out by Gary Moore and company but brought down by number four, Ronnell Wilson as that's his sixth tackle of this afternoon. It's going to be a third and short here. In my humble opinion, I would believe this may be four down territory unless we have the strong trust in this wicked win of Bedarski. Expect to see the team stay on the field here. And that's a nice block by Gunn as he's got Arnold wide open inside the 10 yard line. Pushed out of bounds by Jay Edwards. And they're in business here as they've got it at the 5 yard line. Well, 
It was a completion nonetheless, but Ryan Schlichty didn't necessarily make that the easiest grab. Gotta love the athleticism from Justin Arno. Be able to go up, turn around, and get full extension and pull that ball in. Mavericks in business here on the Tarleton Texans 6 here. This will be a huge turn of events if the Mavericks get punch one in here with 30 seconds left in the first half. And they're knocking on the door at the goal line. Here's Ryan Schlichty. As he's flushed out by Gary Moore, and he'll just throw that one away. And there's a guy that we mentioned earlier. He's going to be a, he's a pesky dude in that number 10 on the defensive side. I just don't understand what the thought process was there of the right guard, or excuse me, number 66, uh, the right tackle, Jared Gosen. He just got flat out beat with an inside rush, and... Schlickley was already committed to throwing the ball away, and he just grabbed him around the waist. A uh, very ill-advised play by the right tackle. I get the thought process there because you don't want your quarterback to take a hit, but I have the wherewithal to see your quarterback throwing the ball away, and now backed up out of territory in a long first and goal situation. And the clock does show 23 seconds left remaining here as they hand it off to Gunn. Gunn goes up the middle and is brought down as they're playing a little bit conservative as he's brought down by EJ Speed. And that's a timeout from Minnesota State and head coach Todd Hafner. Yeah, you saw Gunn slip right away. As soon as contact was made, feet slipped right out from under him. And uh, yeah, tough, tough second and goal situation here. Time now a factor. One timeout left here. So you would gotta you gotta hope that they get a passing play to get inside the five where you have the playbook kind of wide open at that point. And you, you know, it's a tough situation because do you go for it here or do you just trust the strong leg of Bedarski if it comes to that point here in this drive? And coming up at the halftime, we will be going over some key things that we have seen from this first half. Also, we could be joined by the site coordinator here that puts all this on. But it doesn't look like we could see him as they could do some snow removal here. <laughs> as you, at the beginning of the broadcast, if you were with us throughout this whole entire first half, you could see the logo on the 50-yard line. That is completely covered and you can't see it no more. As here we go, coming out of the timeout, one timeout remaining for Minnesota State with 18 seconds left, zero timeouts for Tarleton State. Schlichty, the design quarterback run, and he's brought down by Tyrell Thompson and EJ Speed as EJ Speed decides to celebrate with a snow angel. That was... Uh in my opinion, a very conservative play call there. I don't, I don't, I don't know if you even want to let your quarterback take a hit like that in this deep of the red zone. Get a shot, put a ball in the end zone. I would feel like, but nonetheless, uh, Joe Bashorner felt like he had something there, and that was the call they went with. But to no avail. Let's see if they bring on the leg of Bedarski here. They attempt the attempted three. It still may be a short kick in terms of Bedarski's range, but this wind blowing across the field could make it a difficult field goal attempt if that's what they elect to do. As the wind is blowing from east to west here, and it's coming down now as the snow continues to fall and it looks like a blizzard here and this has got to be pretty fun playing conditions if you are out there on the field but my goodness is it cold as the temperatures are at 30 degrees and if you're Minnesota State you're going to be lucky here you probably got to try a pass here with you know so many seconds remaining as you just want to stop the clock and just in case to get Bonarski as he drops back and it's underthrown and picked off by EJ Speed at the floor just just a very 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 poor throw by Schlichty you had the guy you had him over the top going to the corner of the end zone and put very little mustard on it maybe the weather and the wind had an effect on the ball but you got to put it in a spot where only one guy has to catch it that being your own guy and underthrown ball and that thwarts all momentum on that drive as that is another turnover for the Maverick offense as it looks like Toronto State is just going to take a knee here with only three seconds remaining as this is a little bit of a uh, weird formation for the knee and that results in a halftime. At halftime, Toronto State leads the number one team in the nation, Minnesota State, 10-0. 
and you are watching Maverick Football here on MBN Network. Hmm. Hmm. Oops. Yeah, I know my shoes are so everything that we expected to be and we'll get to that in a minute and alongside us joining us here in the booth is Kevin Beisman the director of athletics and Kevin it's great to have you up here as we see your team working very hard on the field for snow removal and I just want to ask what exactly does it take to get a playoff game like this especially in these conditions well you know uh, it's a bid process uh, that, that starts near the end of the season we put in a qualifying bid for all rounds of the playoffs and and that's week-to-week -week preparation, communicating with the visiting team. Uh, we have a, a, a national call uh, on Mondays and then another uh, organizational meeting on Friday night. And we start a meeting uh, uh, Friday morning about uh, weather contingencies and snow removal strategies. So we're able to operationalize that plan right now. And when it comes to setting up something like this, especially when you are notified only a week in advance of who you're going to be playing, what is it like getting these guys set up and make sure they're comfortable when coming up from having such a long journey traveling over a thousand or a thousand miles or roughly a couple hundred miles to get here in Charlton State? Yeah, you know, you, you know this is their first trip up to Mankato. They're playing out of their uh, climate. It was 75 to kick off <laughs> last week down there uh, in Texas, so obviously a little bit different weather conditions. And, and we do what we can to, you know, proactively communicate with them on starting with that call on Monday. Actually, you know, shortly after uh, uh, they uh, uh, finalized their game, we sent them a, a handbook talking about timing and hotel assignment and all that stuff even last Saturday. Wow, so you guys have already got that stuff and you guys are already prepared. And that's just great to see as Minnesota State does a tremendous job led by you and Paul Allen. And you guys just do a tremendous job hosting this. And another thing I will get to is we have multiple uh, events on today as over in the Taylor Center, we got men's and women's basketball. That tips off women's basketball at 3.30. And not only do you do this, but you also do the basketball games. What does something like that do? when you have multiple events at in the same day. Well, well you mentioned, you know, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a team effort. Uh, you know, uh, we've got um, some great uh, administrative leadership, and you mentioned Paul Allen, uh, Tim Marshall is another one. Everybody kind of, you know, takes their piece of the rope and pulls it all in the right direction. Um, you know, uh, when we have other events, uh, it is a little bit more challenging. We did make some adjustments to game time for basketball, uh, you know, for the benefit of our fans, everything from uh, uh, parking coordination to staffing to, to breaking some people loose uh, to get over there to uh, uh, staff the basketball game a little bit later. So we moved it from 2 to 4 to 3.30 to 5.30 to, to make everything flow a little bit better uh, all the way around. Thank you, Kevin. I appreciate you coming up here and joining us here for a little bit and talking about all this stuff. I appreciate it. Thank you for your time yep. and thank you for coming up to the booth. You bet. Go Mavericks. All right, as we get to take a look here at the total yards, this game is everything we have expected it to be, Jordan, in a sense where it's a grit and grind type of game, and the matchup here is something that Tarleton State is beating them in almost every aspect of the game. Yeah, and yeah, uh, in many football games, the turnover margin or differential, if you will, is usually a deciding factor in who's going to win this game. And right now, they're plus one in the turnover category. Tarleton, that is. Uh, they made the big plays, the big uh, play to Zamari Manning or down on the far sideline for that long touchdown. Uh, all the big key and crucial points in these games has gone in favor of the Tarleton State Texans. Now, 
what Minnesota needs to do, they need to find some semblance of what they've been over the past three and four weeks here. They're just struggling in many different facets of the game. They're not running the ball exceptionally well. I think some of the ground has something to do that. But these big wide receivers of Tarleton State are doing a great job against some of the backup and undersized corners here, making it very difficult in general to get any kind of passing game going. And you look at the late interception there and the closing seconds of the first half. Excuse me, you look at the drop pass there by Zilstra going in. That could have been a touchdown. And not capitalizing on some of these big opportunities they had. And then quite, quite conversely on the other side, Tarleton State is capitalizing on all these big play potentials and when they get going. And you can see the elusiveness and acceleration of Xavier Turner and McCants there. They have done a great job of being very patient and not trying to do too much. Get into the line, seeing where it is and where it isn't. But when they've seen it, they've done a great job of making something of it. And it's, it's we're going to see what this secondary for the Mavericks can do because I think all around uh, the front four and the front seven have done a pretty decent job of holding Tarleton in check because we know they got two rushers that rush for uh, over a thousand yards and one of them in Turner having 22 touchdowns. So they're very proficient in the run game. And looking at that, they've only ran the ball 17 times for 70 yards where Minnesota has ran it 29 times for buck 68. So it's working, but it's not. They're doing a lot of their efforts in between the 20s, which is good and all. But once you get inside of the 20, into the red zone, that's where people make their money proverbially. So right now, uh, Tarleton's got the upper hand. And you got to give credit to head coach Todd Witten now in his third stint with Tarleton State of having, having them mentally prepared. You, you can see on camera right now, this is very frigid and rough conditions you would think for someone coming from Texas. This is this is something they're not used to. And as Kevin said, having it be 75 degrees last week in their last playoff game coming out here now, as I'm sure it's dipped under 30 degrees, it's, it's got to be a tough feat. And having them mentally prepared for that has, I think, proven to be a big factor for them. So... Let's see what head coach Todd Hofter and staff has for him. They've had a great job all season in the second half coming out with the adjustments, but they also haven't had the play from behind against a very talented team as every team now left in the playoff has a, a plethora of talent on their roster, and they wouldn't, they wouldn't be here if they didn't. So we'll see what the Mavericks can do going forward here. And I think so far the biggest play of that first half, not, it wasn't that 67-yard touchdown by Samari Manning. It was that hold yeah. down here for Minnesota yeah. State with little time left on the clock, and it, it was just an absolute gut punch as they kicked themselves in the foot. Yeah, and that's really tough, and that's uh, one thing with the Mavericks that's quite uncharacteristic so far has been they've made some very dumb mental mistakes there. The hold by the right tackle as a quarterback was throwing the ball away. And like I said, I get it. He's trying to save a hit from there. And then kind of the conservative play calling down there, running the QB keep to the right with Schlichty. Uh, you know, you just don't want those hits on your quarterback. And it just just not, things aren't clicking necessarily on all on the right cylinders for the Mavericks. But we play the whole game. That's why you play 60 minutes of it, and we still got 30 to go. And you look at some of these replays here, and the big one that I thought was going to do wonders for him to try to set up that scoring drive was the Bedarski uh, fake punt and run there. Beautifully designed, and I thought that was going to be going in for seven. But nonetheless, Tarleton came right back out and a quick change of pace there and made a great defensive stop there and an underthrown ball. So... Hopefully, this Maverick offense and the quarterback play could pick up just a little bit. And, you know, you got to capitalize on it when you get those chances like Zilstra's drop ball and not putting enough air on and some of those little things there. But they're still in contention. you got the leg of Bedarski, and you still got 30 minutes to play, and you're only down 10. Maverick offense, we know, is very capable about putting up points, much like the Tarleton State Texans are. So it's, this is the type of football game, like you said, that we're expecting. Get on the ground, get going, and you want your big players to make big plays. And so far, Tarleton's done that job a little bit better than the Mavericks. As you've seen how chippy it's been, both teams really want this game. As last year, this was the same round Minnesota State got knocked out of against Texas A&M Commerce, the team actually that Tarleton State just beat to get here. 
So, and they beat them twice already this season. Yep. So they knew coming into it, Minnesota State had their hands full, and especially in that linebacking linebacking core of EJ Speed and the defensive backs there. Yep. And Jay Edwards, he's having himself a whale of a ball game. And also up front, Gary Moore. He's not getting, got himself to the quarterback just yet as he leads the team with five and a half sacks. But he's doing his job in getting that initial pressure and allowing his teammates to do their job. Yeah, and I think, too, the athleticism of these big guys up front for uh, Tarleton State has been absolutely phenomenal. I've even been quite impressed. I don't think Minnesota State has quite seen anyone like this yet, and it's very tough. And you got to think about it this way, too. They've been number one for months now, and have every game they've had that target on their back. Let's go try to chop down the number one seed Mavericks. Let's do that. No one in conference was able to do it. But right now, Tarleton proven to have the talent and the wherewithal from the coaching staff to um, come here and take care of some business halfway through this game. But in one thing I thought the Mavericks would be able to capitalize on there is some of the miscommunications and um, people not being in the correct spot for Tarleton State where they had to burn all three timeouts very quickly in that first half. But... None of it proved to be any kind of a factor for them as offensively they came out and took care of business and got up quick. And I think that's one thing we talked about yesterday in our little bit of our prep is that, you know, I thought exactly what was going to happen is that Minnesota State was going to come out and uh, get punched in the mouth first, you know. How are you going to react just like a boxer? You know, you come out and take a hard jab yeah. right to the face yeah. right away. You go, whoa, hey, yeah. not used to this. But yeah. settle down. Hoffner and staff, they're they used to the situation. And, you know, Tarleton's playing up to the challenge. They are definitely playing up to the challenge. And quite if they win this game, that'll be the first time they've ever made it to the semifinals since they joined the NCAA. So, you know, it's kind of one of those situations where they're playing like they got nothing to lose and Minnesota State playing a little bit conservative like they may have something to lose. Now, I think they just got to come out, play a little bit more wide open, and just do their brand of football better. As the frozen tundra of Minnesota just is a winter wonderland yeah. here as the snow continues to fall and it gets heavier and heavier as we continue to go on. You are listening and watching Maverick Football on MPN Network. We will be right back after these messages.
caught him there as he comes off the field. He definitely looked a little uh, stunned from that big open hand punch by Zilstra. That's not one man I would want to take a stiff arm from coming across the field. Especially in this time and place, he rips <laughs> yes. your helmet off. <laughs> and as the handoff is to Gunn, as he's looking for some room, EJ Speed forces him to the outside as he goes after the ball, but is forced out. That's a nice gain of nine here for Gunn. And the Maverick offense is under uh, way here. And they are looking to start with that one two punch here as Zilstra and Gunn are getting what they need. Yeah, that was a good patience there by Nate Gunn. Uh, getting right on the back. I think they need to change it up just a little bit. They're getting a little bit predictable here, and when second down comes, or first down comes, they go right to that power. As Akawa has all day to throw, but he's hit by EJ Speed, the ball's up in the air. And that is fumbled by Jay Edwards as he was the one to intercept it, but coming up with the football, in fact, is number nine here, and that's Chadwick Thibodeau. Yeah, no one accounting for the man coming off the end line of the scrimmage, and Akawa eats a big hit right to the chin. Ball goes up in the air, and it was up there playing an old-fashioned game of 500 like you would back in the neighborhood, and not the start for the Maverick team you would, ex you would expect to want here. But nonetheless, defense has got to come up big. Each possession grows a little bit more and more important here. Each one you go into the game. And that guy getting the initial pressure is EJ Speed. And here's Xavier Turner as he gets a gain of four as he's brought down by number 49, Alex Gettle. Yeah, good job by Gettle coming in, finishing up and helping there. But this is, you know, if you're Tarleton, if you get a score here, regard a score to put it up three possessions as they're taking a little page out of Minnesota State's book running back-to-back -back power plays, it's got it's any points here, especially a touchdown, it's going to make it very, very difficult for the Mavericks to stay in it. But a big third down here, quick three and out, could, could prove vital to go a long way for this Maverick defense. As the linebacker, Zach Robinson, and they stop him. As he is there in on that one again, and Zach Robertson is making a name for himself as he continues to be a force to be reckoned with on that defensive side. That's a great job there by the defense as a whole, and there, as you said, big time, big time job of making that three and out happen right there, and a chance to get the ball back. Now, if you're Minnesota State, you, just be careful you don't get a taste of your own medicine here, because. You pulled it now in these conditions might not be the best for a, a good punt, if at all. So keep your head up here. But they will, in fact, kick it. And here's he Ron gets away Reed a boomer. Deep to Arnold as Arnold's going to let that one bounce. And that takes a very big bounce in the favor as he slid into the end zone. But the fans are having something to do, to do with it. And so is Todd Hoffner as he slid into the end zone, but he still kept the ball in uh from coming, going into the end zone. So I think that's what the refs are seeing there as they just are going to let that one be yeah. have it down at the three-yard line. It looked like he had possession of it and before any part of his body got into the end zone, that's where they're going to down it, where there's first contact and possession of the ball. They're going to down it there, and then he eventually slid in. So good job by the Tarleton punt team to come up and make it difficult. This is when you have to go 90-plus yards in weather like this, no matter how good of a team you are, highly difficult to do and this is field position game has been won all day long by the Tarleton State Texans and here is the handoff to Gunn as he looks for it and he gains about five and if you take a look on the hill both sides there are writing their uh, respective schools initials MSU and TSU as these fans from Texas are getting themselves a Minnesota winter and an experience so far here that is could be absolutely unmatched yeah this is tough tough weather and you know regardless of how cold one may feel it's just you can't do all the same things that you normally do offensively the ground's harder to run on you can't get your feet in the ground to get going in a direction you want so some of these Big, big play missed opportunities early on by the Mavericks in the first half are, are coming back to haunt them right now as they get backed up in the territory. 
so far in this game and can't really get much going. And as this wind continues to whip around the snow, the handoff is the gun as he goes forward and gets a first down for Minnesota State. And that's the and that's a huge first down to get them out of in a little bit of breathing room from the back of the end zone. Yeah, because you never know what could happen if you have to punt there. Bedarski's punt from his own end zone, and the mistakes can magnify if there's a slip up in the exchange or just a bad punt. So they need to get the, at the very least here, get that field pos position flipped here on this drive. But points have been at a premium here in the Mavericks, not able to cash in on any so far. And Schlichty is in at quarterback for Minnesota State. And it's a designed QB run as Schlichty heads up the middle and goes forward and gains about seven as he it is another shoelace tackle by number 29, Jay Edwards. This is what I'd like to see more of out of this Maverick offense. You can't really be running this power this power game per se because you're moving too much laterally you need to just go north and south here straight ahead so simple little dives their little isolation plays their isos if you will straight ahead because you don't want to try to be dancing around too much because nothing's going to happen there and minnesota state's offensive line has done a tremendous job against tarleton states as the handoff is there too and i believe that is schlichty as that was another design quarterback run as he gains the first down and that'll move the stairs yeah good job by Akawa there finding that little sliver of space you got to give credit to these edge defenders here for tarleton they've done a great job of not letting them bounce too far outside and it's making it easier to let your d lineman play down the line and let your linebackers come downhill and make plays and so far they've done a great job containing gun and here is Gunn as he gains a couple, and he's brought down by number nine, Chadwick Thibodeau. A little bit at a time here. They're getting into it, getting still up. They're still upwards of five yards of carry, but it's in between the 20s, and they have, uh, like I've said, have struggled getting into scoring range. And Schlifty here on second down at seven, hands it off to Gunn. Gunn falls forward and he's brought down by number five, EJ Speed. This is exactly what the Mavericks need to do. Let this very big offensive line start to lean in some people, get some bigger double team blocks up front because it's tough for the linebackers as it is to make a tackle in space with the way the footing is. So get these offensive linemen up there being aggressive on those first level defenders as the far official looks to have the spot for a first down and that they do. That's another first down, the third one so far. And it seems like the more the snow falls, the more the Mavericks are moving the football. And as we take a look here, you can see the Taylor Center, you know with this, but you can barely see the roof. And it's kind of, I don't know whether you could say excitement as this is our first big snowfall as we're projected to get six to eight inches here in Mankato as that run by Terramina goes for three. Well, I think the biggest thing with the weather is uh, there wasn't a lot of snowfall this week here in Minnesota either, and I can almost guarantee you, in fact, I can guarantee you there's probably zero snowfall in Texas, so there is no way to necessarily prepare yourself for this. So both teams kind of in uncharted territory, if you will, in terms of this weather. But right now, seems like Minnesota State has found it, and like I was saying, this straight-ahead run game is proven much more effective. There's no, you can't dance around anymore. There's just no way. It's not about them not being athletic athletic enough, just quite simply, you can't do it. You can't yeah, move like that. You really can't, and Terramina is getting his name more called in. That's something we didn't see a whole lot towards the end of the season. At the beginning of the season, you saw Gunn, Terramina, Pribble. Pribble would get his fair share of knocks and carries. And then you get Terramina, who would have himself about 10 carries, yeah. about seven to 10 carries a ball game. You didn't see that the last five, six games of the regular season and last game even. Well, you yeah. know, Terramino was out, but it's just still, it just shows that they rely on Gunn so much and having Terramina as another back in there to relieve right. Gunn is something that I think really goes unnoticed. Absolutely. And it's something that when it comes to the dual threats of the quarterback, but also the tailback. 
Yeah, and you know, it's good having that one-two punch in the backfield as you're alluding to there. You know, um, I'm not, I don't know what's going on here. I don't know if they're gonna, there looks like they're gonna get an official's timeout here and get a measurement here as I'm sure it's not the easiest thing to see are the hash marks on the field. But I like what they've done so far here coming out in the start of the second half in running the ball straight ahead. And they're they're allowing their big offensive line that we has been highly successful in the running game and running running right behind them. And they're letting them lean on those defenders and it's proven to help help this offense out quite heavily here so far. And we await the spot in the chain gang to get this sorted. And first down for the Mavericks and some of the Tarleton players pointing out the chain ganger the officials on where they spotted but nonetheless that's the first down and Mavericks ball and you one just hear the excitement from the, yes. the parents and the supporters here that are enduring these conditions and it's just quite remarkable the love that Minnesota State fans have for their football here as the handoff goes to Gunn. Gunn's got the parting of the Red Sea as he falls on Jay Edwards, it looks like, and he gains even about a yard more. Yeah, they're finding a little bit recipe for success. In a way, you can see them taking out some of their defensive linemen. It kind of null and voids the athleticism of the Tarleton defense. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but when you run straight ahead, that doesn't allow them to be athletic, get the hands off, move side to side, and make a good play, if you will. And more confusion on the defensive side for Tarleton State, as that's a nice run there by Gunn as he looked to break something. But in there on the tackle is Devin Harford and EJ Speed, as that is another Maverick first count. Yeah, that was a great job there on that carry. But keep the feet moving, not letting them stop, because that's when it becomes hard to get going again in these conditions. You gotta keep that forward momentum as we already climb under six minutes here. If you look at the style of offense that's being played, this is what you're gonna get. So when they, they need points now, and if they, this is an empty drive, it's gonna get mightily tough to come back in this one. as a big play by Tom there. That we did notice, when it came to Tarleton State in possessing the football, as we looked at it, it was incredibly remarkable at the fact of they held it for 31 minutes of time. I mean, that's not that remarkable as it still was about half the time, but it was with all the points that they threw up, and right. yet they still had are leading in time. And this isn't the case this game. Right. At halftime, Minnesota State held the ball for 19 minutes and 31 seconds compared to Tarleton State's at 10 minutes and 29 seconds. And it's just a back and forth matchup here but Minnesota State is really running this football as they are not passing it whatsoever except on that shallow cross by uh, Shane Zilstra on that first drive. Yeah, and I'm, uh, I'm really interested to see what we're going to get for a play call here on this third and long about third and about seven and a half eight if you will what what are we going to dial up here as we're in the pistol formation as it play clock got to three before Schlichty decided to snap it yeah, gone, first down a nice careful cut there because he doesn't want to pull anything or do anything to himself as he gets another Maverick first down and that's number six on the drive. I absolutely love how you put it right there the careful cut and that's exactly what it was you can see the free arm that didn't have the ball winding up to try to control that momentum and we're gonna have another officials timeout here as they're gonna bring the chains out again I, I am not envious of this official's job here no, to try to no. find where the ball should be placed and if it's a first down. This is remarkable. They had the 20 yard marker all cleared out. You don't <laughs> even know where that is anymore. <laughs> and as the clock shows three minutes and 37 seconds left here in this uh, third quarter. And this game is just moving. Yes. And the uh, Tarleton State has only had one possession in uh, about 11 and a half minutes of uh, play here in the third quarter. And it's just remarkable that they only held the ball for 45 seconds. Right. Well, you know, and that's kind of the nature of the beast here. And that's why I'm saying Minnesota State's got to come away with points here. Because regardless if Tarleton scores again, 
it, it, the clock's going to run at the very least. You would expect two minutes to come off the clock as about two minutes each of each uh, new set of downs comes off the clock with each run because it's been run, run, run. And that's really tough as a defense and offensive line to get your heels dug into the ground to be able to get some kind of, you know, force or pressure because you're slipping all over the place. And when you get a loose back like Gun and Terramina spelling him, it's um it's really tough to get your footing and get a solid tackle. As the fans start the MSU chant, waiting for these referees to get everything situated as they were trying to remove the snow to help them out for this measurement as it comes up and it looks first like down. Minnesota State does in fact get the first down by half the length of a football. Yeah, that's huge right there. And you know, quite honestly, that may have just helped Minnesota a lot more than it does Tarleton because it gives uh, uh, excuse me, offense co coordinator Joe Bichorner, some time to really think about and dial up a better play here because they got them on their heels a little bit. This drive in the running game was straight ahead, and we got now the far judge coming in and calling time here. He needs to communicate something with the head ref. As this just continues, they're gonna put as it, 17 as they, seconds back on. Didn't have the ball lined up quite right, and they're going to put seven seconds back up on the clock as the clock did show 3:30. And there's the re there's the whistle to start the game clock or the play clock and the game clock. As here's Schlichty in the pistol formation, and here's Gunn as he mm. tries to bounce outside, but that's a nice tackle by number four, Rodnell Wilson, as we've mentioned his name a lot here this afternoon. Yeah, he's played very well for the Tarleton State Texas defense. You could see a little bit of struggle there in Schlichty just getting out of the way on the handoff. You could see his feet pitter-patter and almost uh, slow down that run play before it even started. And here's the design quarterback run. As that's a nice cut by Ooh. Schlichty and a nice block by Zilstra. But Devin Hafford brings down Schlichty as he's just short and it's third down in about two. Yeah, I, it's tough to say, too. You don't necessarily know. It's like kind of a 50-50 ball right now. Is it fourth down territory or do you have the confidence in this weather where Bedarski could poke one through for you? In my opinion, I feel like it's fourth down territory if it comes to that I point. I feel like you're running the ball way too well not to do anything yep. about it. Absolutely. And it does result in a fourth down here. And it does look like this side of the foot of uh, this uh, this sideline on the Maverick side, it looks like the uh marker was a little bit too close to the first down marker. Yeah. So it gave us a little bit of confusion <laughs> here as they are in fact going for it here and they are moving and they're running the football way too well to not go for this in my opinion and they As definitely they got the it first and they do down in fact get it and that's a nice rumbling bumbling <laughs> stumbling first down there for nate gunn yeah and if you're a minnesota state fan you got to be very pleased with what you're seeing here as the downpour of snow continues to get worse this wind is absolutely whipping out here but this is a great answer so far coming out of the locker room to have a big play and big first downs on the ground like this. And Schlichty does stumble as he's looking to get outside and he just slips and falls and he is fell on by Tyrell Thompson as the clock dips under 130 to go. Yeah, you can tell by just how the footprints from these guys out here. There's actual a pretty good accumulation on the ground and I can't imagine it being very easy whatsoever to even do the basics here out on the field. No, and here is Gunn oh, as big he hole, finds big some hole. running room and Gunn is brought down from behind by number 23, Chris Gordon. I think with our best estimation up here, we're looking like we're on the sit, or no, excuse me, where is the ball spotted? Well, it, looks like, it looks like we're at the, about the nine Ten? yard line yep. as of right now. Uh, we don't really have any markers <laughs> to go off of right now. So we're gonna do our best judgment here as the handoff is to gun oh, and man. he gets the first down and then some as they are first down and goal on the three yard line. This is huge right now. This needs to happen. A big third down run. Oh, the first down, excuse me. I didn't notice that. And and Tarleton's taking a timeout here. 
as the clock does show 33 seconds and Tarleton State uses their first time out here this second half. And this is the energy and the momentum yes. here as eight first downs on this drive for Minnesota State have got them first in goal and in business. Yeah, and what they've done and, and quite simply had to do without any choice was simplify it. You got you to just turn around, hand the ball off. You know, I'm surprised we haven't seen a little bit of play action out of it because I think they would have opportunity. Yep. But, again, that comes back to what you've done so far in the ground. Yep. They've gone yep. over 90 yards now so far and need a few more to cap it off. But just a great job here by the offensive line, really getting man on man. And one thing that hurts Tarleton is something that's kind of out of their out of their control is that it's kind of made these defensive linemen null and void, not by the fact that there's little or no effort or they're not – doing correct assignment football they just can't move in this weather and they're athletic big men and yeah, it really yeah. slows them down and this drive belongs to that offensive line absolutely and what they have done for gun tiramina and schlichty and they are about to march it 90 plus yards to get a touchdown yeah. on this team <laughs> and it's only been run plays, yep. and it's just been straight up the gut, ground and pound, and that's just something that you expect from Minnesota State, but not against this defense. No, and they're they're 25, 25 yards away from being at the 300-yard mark in the rushing category today, which is, that's something you would expect to see in a quarterback stat line, but given where we're at and what the conditions are, that is quite impressive, as they have outgained them. Oh, big play by Tarleton that's there. that's a big loss there, and that's a nice initial push there by Jordan Phillips, the defensive tackle, 6'4", 310 junior. Yeah, you know, it, and it, just as much as it's difficult for their defensive linemen, it can be just as difficult for the Minnesota State offensive line to get to the position they need to be, and that proved to be the case there as 92 made a beautiful play. And that mm. is rushing attempt number 56 on the afternoon. And as he looks to gain about one, and that puts Minnesota State at 272 for the game. And that's a timeout, or excuse me, at the end of the first quarter or third quarter here at the Blake. And this is a game, or actually a quarter, huh. that was completely dominated. And if you're the Toronto State defense, you got yourself about three or four timeouts there for measurements, and you <laughs> caught your breath, but that wear and tear on that ground game is remarkable. Yeah, it's very, very, very difficult to defend. And um, I was surprised that Minnesota State had such a great defensive series there Double. on that first one that cost a quick three and out, and you got to finish here, you know. It had a little bit of a letdown there as big number 92 for the Texan defense. Jordan Phillips made one heck of a play there to really make it difficult now. And I don't know. Do you try a little play action pass here? Because, you know, the pass rush isn't going to be what it is just simply because of you can't get going as fast or excel as fast as you have been. I don't know. I'd be willing to almost consider it strongly here, but it's four down territory here. It's third down on the six, and you got two plays to get six yards essentially. So yeah. you got to get it done right here. This is the start of the fourth quarter, and no points have been scored, but they're knocking on the door again. This is the second time they've been inside the 10, and so far have came up with absolutely nothing in the scoring department. Nate Gunn, we just received, has 40 attempts at rushing with 193 yards, which is an average of 4.8. Yeah. To me, that's very unusual. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, you know, it's not a bad day in the office, one no, could argue. No. But um, look at this grounds crew feverishly out here, or frantically rather, too, trying to get this surface to be visible as they got the gator plowing <laughs> the end zone in the south side as he just continues to push the snow towards the fences and they got the ground crew just working extra hard my hats off to them in these conditions as it just continues to just ground <laughs> and pound here and it's unbelievable as they're getting the hash marks on this uh on the main field ready to play and if you're minnesota state's defense you gotta like you didn't really need to do <laughs> anything besides 
a three and out and right. you're your, your offense yes. taking you this far <laughs> into the fourth quarter. Yeah, you know, and the, the thing about it, these 10 points, that's really not a bad job by a defensive unit no, overall. Not at all. And, you know, not to discredit the scoring play they had there on the yep. pass to, yep. to um, Zamari is... They got beat on one big play, and you know that's football. Sometimes, yep. in a nutshell, is not giving up that big play, and you know somehow limiting that. But quite honestly, this needs to happen right here. If they don't score, it just exponentially gets difficult for the Mavericks going forward. As I'm sure Carlton will look to kill a bunch of clock when they get the ball back themselves. As it looks like it is, the ball is on the six yard line as they continue to plow and just shovel this side of the field. And they are working on the yard lines here. And it's just, they're starting to, Kevin Beisman is just waving them off to tell them to get off the field because they're about ready to start play. And there is literally about a half an inch of snow down on the huh. ground over here. And it's quite remarkable that the footing of these football players is still intact. Yeah, I don't, I honestly don't quite know how they're doing it, but they're all division two high level athletes here and they're doing what they can this is this is huge here this is a big third down and goal here for minnesota state as they we are waiting the signal from the referees and as you take a look here on the sideline of both sides pretty much uh what would you say about 88 to 90 percent of them are still wrapped up in their jackets <laughs> trying to stay warm and take it off but I don't know. I'm looking at Jack Curtis, and he's making me warm just sitting there watching because he's got a little area stomped out here on the sidelines just for himself from where he's been jumping, just trying to stay loose and stay warm here in the uh, Here we go. Tundra. And here's the handoff to Gunn. Gunn Stop. runs into a sea of white, and he's pushed back in. That's a gain of one, fourth down and goal. All right. Decisions, decisions, decisions. Looks like right away, no hesitation by the staff, leaving the offense out there. And I think this is, could, could be a real make or break. I mean, you're leaving points if you don't get this yep. on the on the board. You're just absolutely doing whatever you can not to do it. I mean, you had yourself in your defense. The last three possessions for Thomas State have been three knots. Right. And to me, you have so much faith in your defense, but you're also showing a lot of faith in your offense here to get this done when you have all these weapons. But do you try a little... Crossing route? What do you, I mean, what do you what do you think here, Jordan? Don't know. They are gonna. They are running the slant and, and it's a fade to what a catch! And that's a what nice a catch. catch! As he was falling down, Shane Zilstra has his sweatshirt ripped huh. on the arm just to show how much of a hold he was getting, and that is a heck of a touchdown wow. by number 84. Well, you know, if he was getting a game check. There would be a big bonus there for making a big play at a big time. Unbelievable job. But now, hold the excitement a little bit because this extra point is huge as you got some of the big guys with their size 13 plus cleats trying to clear an area here. They got 18 seconds to do as best as they can. And here we go. This is a huge extra point attempt that will make it a one possession game if Bedarski is able to bang it through. Carter Dowdle and Trevor Nissen were there yes. to help Narski. Is that extra point is good. And it's 10 7 as that Tarleston State lead is cut to three. Unbelievable job there by the Maverick offense. No trickery. Just we're we're gonna assert our will on you and we're gonna run the ball right at you down the field. And what a beautiful drive by that Maverick offense. That needed to happen because as I said, if they didn't score points there, boy, the uphill battle just got steeper and steeper. But Jobus Shorner able to sure it up, settle down, and have a great offensive drive there. And Zilstra with a beautiful catch and tight coverage there from the Tarleton defense. Able to hold on and get six and seven there for the Mavericks. And this drive and this scoring summary is quite remarkable. 27 plays, 97 yards for a total of 12 minutes and nine seconds. Yeah, and that was wow. a five-yard touchdown from Schlichty to Zilstra. And Zilstra made one heck of an acrobatic catch to that come down did. with the football and come down with that touchdown. But here we go as the Taunton players are confused of where they're allowed to line up. And <laughs> they're getting receiving some instruction here from 
the referees on what to do as both field judges are in fact giving them the deed as Casey Bernarski is trying to give himself some way and a nice running pass so he doesn't slip and fall and can get everything on yeah. this football. Well, in my coaching mind here, you look at the second line of defenders there, I would almost pooch kick it right at them because those are all big linemen, but the ball is on the ground. It's picked up by D or McCants here as he goes to the middle of the field and is brought down and is met by four members of the Minnesota State special teams unit. Yeah, I know we're playing field position game and maybe I'm thinking too much into it, but keep this in mind here. Uh, they had three defensive linemen on the second level of that. And I would almost going forward, if it, if it comes to that again, chance that because I don't think they can move quite well as some of the elusive backs and receivers for Tarleton Ken. Well, that's the second time we have seen McCain's muff a yep. uh, uh, punt return or a uh, kickoff return. So, I mean, I don't necessarily see it, but he just had some time to easily pick it up right. and you know, get some yards as he ran it back for a gain of 17. So he's done his fair share of, you know, moving the football. And Daniel McCants is not, in fact, in the backfield this time as Ben Holmes is joined by Xavier Turner as he goes and yells something to his offensive line for this possession as it's their second one of the half. Yeah, and the job that the Minnesota State defense has done today and holding them to 76 yards on 20 carries has been incredible for a running offense that quite honestly has been very very dominant for Tarleton State all season long and to keep them out of the end zone here and just force a three and out as Cole Schrodermeyer wanted a piggyback ride <laughs> from Xavier Turner as he hops on the back to help the big fella down as he only gains two and here's second down and eight handoff to Turner bounces it Great to the left job. side that's a nice initial push by Number 90, Zach Dodge. Yeah, great job by Zach Judge, Dodge, excuse me. Big two-handed punch and stunning the offensive lineman right there at the line of scrimmage and making Turner have to try to fight his way around him rather than running through a crease. And here it is, folks. The Maverick crowd is into it. Sidelines that are into go. it. And defense is playing good right now. Third and long. Yep, here we go. Handoff of the fake handoff, oh. and, that's, and it's incomplete. Baxter Curvin was the intended receiver as he had himself maybe a first down, well, and potentially to move the sticks, but that was just a bad throwing ball as it was thrown a little bit behind them. Yeah, and I think that was a cause by the Maverick defense because early on in the game they were in man coverage when that RPO came. That's exactly what they were running there offensively, but they sat in a very basic vanilla cover or Tampa 2 zone defense so that linebacker got the depth and the corner coming over closed that window and made it very tight and that's why that throw was behind the receiver because if he threw it out ahead that might have been an interception and that he fell down no flag back deep for the Mavericks is Arnold and Tiramino and they'll just allow that one to go down as that's down at about the 35 yard line and well we got away with one almost there the punter fell and that in turn tripped up Zach Dodge so almost got a rough in the kicker there you gotta be careful big fella pull up on the reins there you can't afford any more penalties <laughs> and they're gonna forego a Kawa here and here comes Schlichty for his second consecutive drive as he had a little bit of the hot hand and they're just going to run with what they yep. can go with. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. I would, and nothing against the Cowell whatsoever. No, Neither quarterback has necessarily played great, but Schlichty is passionate right now. Very hot coming off that last touchdown drive. And here's the handoff to Gunn as he goes forward for a gain of two, and he's brought down by none other than number 92, Jordan Phillips. Yeah, there may need to be a little bit different of approach here. Not much, but at the same time, you may have to change it up because you just ran 27 plays straight ahead into a defense for a touchdown. Guess what? That coaching staff is not going to want you to do there 27 more times. As Gunn pushes Big some people down. over, and he's got himself a first down as Nate Gunn proving to be a huge factor in this ball game. That's, are they, they I'm not oh, quite they're gonna sure. they're short. They're going to mark yeah, a Yeah, but it short. is third down. And it's third down in inches here. 
as they're in the pistol formation, hand off the gun. Gun's got it, and then some. And he's brought down by Chadwick Thibodeau. Great job there by this this Maverick offensive line. Came out with a brand new attitude, and that's an yes, attitude did. of a bad man that you don't want to see in a small space. No, and don't. they're certainly no. leaning on these, as I said, athletic defensive linemen for the size, but they can't do the same things they were doing early on because of the footing. Yeah, they yeah. just can't move and excel as quick as they were. And that really plays into the big size overall of this Maverick offensive line and really helps them out as one of as the defensive guns. linemen is down very slow to get up. And that is number 92, Jordan Phillips, as he's shaking up on the play. And that was Gunn's 46th yeah. rushing attempt here this afternoon as Nate Gunn has got himself over 200 yards rushing as well. And he has been if not the biggest factor on offense besides that offensive line. Yeah, this is, and that's it. And this would be a very tough loss for Tarleton here as Jordan Phillips has played a plethora of snaps here and has given him solid work up front. Yeah, him and his partner Tyrell Thompson have been the real factor up there getting that initial push yeah. and allowing Gunn just to see that sea of white right there. But one guy we haven't really seen so far this uh this second half is number 10 gary moore we have seen him on the sidelines for quite some time and i got no word on that and i'm just looking forward and it's quite you know surprising what's going on you know it's and obviously not in a bad way you, you wish them all well but exactly. certainly does does yeah. help out the maverick offense having two key players now not on the field due to injury and just hopefully it's nothing serious and they can return here shortly and in for Mr. Phillips is number 44, Tavares Owens. And Schlichty on the quarterback keeper mm. gets back to a line of scrimmage, maybe a yard, and he's brought down by Jay Edwards and number 25, Ed Hayes. You can feel the pressure each third down. As that clock keeps sticking, you can just feel it. You can slice that pressure with a butter knife. It is getting intense here as each one becomes more and more critical. And now being at the midfield stripe, it may still be four down territory again. They are inside the Tarleton mm. territory as EJ Speed gets around that edge to bring down Gunn, and that is fourth down and six. Yeah, that was a great play there by Speed, using his speed off the edge, if you will. No pun intended, right? uh, Well, maybe a little bit, <laughs> but nonetheless, flying around the edge and making a tackle, and they're opting to bring Badarski on. Uh, I'm sure in the back of their mind, they're just... You're just going to uh, play it safe here. As players slipping, getting off the field... No, he purposely slid to get off because they had 12 men on the field because Zamari Manning and Prince Robinson are supposed to be back, but this time it will just be Prince Robinson as it looked like Brady Tuckner decided to slide to avoid <laughs> touching the ball as it looks like Bonarski's punt will go inside. Uh, maybe it looks the 20-yard line for sure, but I don't know if it's at the 15 or not, but we'll soon find out here. <laughs> yeah, the scoreboard will tell us as... <laughs> exactly. We'll have the scoreboard to determine where we decide the ball is. Well, so, And if you're the offensive man, Minnesota State, you exactly didn't want that to happen as you were moving the ball a little bit, but that pressure yeah. by that defensive line buckled down didn't allow it to happen another 27 play drive or whatever yeah. it is something ridiculous they bunkered down and they got what their job was to yeah. supposed to be well and you know if you want to look at a positive there for that drive is now look you flip the field position once again so i mean assuming and that's always not the greatest thing to do is assume anything but you get a stop here quick three and out that you're in plus territory right away on offense. So maybe not the worst outcome as turnovers or anything like that could have been much worse, but hopefully to get another quick three and out as it's a tough running game to stop here. RPO again. And here's Samari Manning. Great, no Jack flag, Chris. great That's job. Great coverage there by number 17. And one of the things I'm gonna point out to you is the man in the backfield, number 21, Xavier Turner. Yeah. We mentioned his name quite some time, or quite a bit here. He's averaging 116 yards per game. He is being held to under 50 yards so far, or excuse me, under 70 yards so far here in this game, and that's quite substantial. 
Another problem with the clock Rachel. operator not stopping it oh, on an incomplete you. pass. But you could see the frustration there in Zamari Manning as he shook his head a little bit, as he did have an uh, open opportunity there and unable to connect. As this is a big third down inside, and here comes Ben Holmes, and he's got oh, Michael Palmy to beat, and he does. As he's up that far sideline, fumbles and it fumbles inside. Oh, man. Uh, territory and that'll fall forward and that was a nice nice play there by Ty Sean and Brooks to get to go for that football for Ben Holmes oh, as he was holding man. that very loosely. Yeah, Ben Holmes got very, very lucky there, carrying it like a loaf of bread that his mom sent him to the store for. And he puts it on the ground and Ah, man, risky play almost helps Minnesota State out, but a good job nonetheless by Ben Holmes creating something out of nothing. As they're at the 49 of Minnesota State, and this is the first time we've seen them inside this territory quite some times, as he's got J.F. Thomas, as he did a nice job there creating separation from Ty Sean and Brooks and my goodness as they got something cooking. Yeah, they found a little something here on the edge. Pass protection doing very well for Tarleton on this drive as they've thrown it three times already. And they're at the 25 of Minnesota State, and here's Xavier Turner, and then again, right up there in front is Zach Robertson. Yeah, I think they realize they're getting a little bit thwarted there in the run game, and that's where Minnesota's teeing off, but now we got to see what these young secondary players can do here they're in a big situation they flip the field position here and they've put the pressure back on the mavericks and here's another play action as he's intended for zamari manning and that's a nice no flag again as they were both doing a little hand jabbing and yeah it was a nice uh, call, but Samari Manning almost had that uh, one-handed uh, catch. Well, you know, he, as much as Zamari Manning has complained all day about this contact, he actually got away with a big push off there with his left arm. Yeah, so, exactly. like you said, that was a great no call. Let him play and let the players decide the final outcome. As Not it's a third down here and eight inside the 25-yard line. Handoff to Xavier Turner as he's got some room, and that's a nice tackle by Cole Schroedermeyer, just shy of that first down marker. And there it looks like he'll be a little bit short, and they could literally stop the uh, clock here. As it is they will down. in fact say it is fourth down and inches, and maybe even like centimeters. Yeah. This, this is a huge play in the game right here. Fourth and about half a foot. They're having more confusion on the Tarleton sideline of who needs to be in the game. They, I don't know what's going on. The coaching staff struggling over there today at getting the right people out on the field at the right time. Jumbo it's formation. Down and one. Hand off to Xavier Turner. Nothing. And he's got nothing. And that's a nice tackle. Five. That's Minnesota State Number football. Nine. Michael Palmy coming from the opposite side, and it looks like Minnesota State might have stopped him short. And, and Ben Holmes, quarterback, just got himself a 15-yard penalty. If that's fourth down, decline it. Turnover on downs, and that would be Maverick football as Ben Holmes got up in the face of Gattle and with John with him like a fool. A very, very stupid play by the quarterback who's supposed to be the leader of the team and keep your head, and he comes in and gets himself a 15-yard penalty. A very bonehead play by Ben Holmes as he puts his hands up in the air. Young man, keep your mouth shut and get your team back in the huddle. And this play will be ended another yes. 15 yards. And you can see head coach, head coach Todd Witten letting Ben Holmes know how bad of a play that was of him to get up there and get involved in that. As that 15 yards goes in heavy favor, yes. as that is a big swing in field position, as the Minnesota State head on the 20, they'll now get it at the 35. Yes. And that's a huge 15 huh. yards as Todd Witten not happy, not <laughs> happy with his captain there yeah. and Ben Holmes 
My goodness, you are a <laughs> you can't make quarterback, that. and that's a mistake yep. that could it, they could cost them. But let's see what this Tarleton State yeah. defense does as they forced Minnesota State last drive to punt after coming off that big 12-minute drive. Let's see what happens here. As Gunn slips, the handoff to Gunn as he goes okay. forward and gets maybe back to the line of scrimmage, maybe just short. Yeah, let's see. This offense, they need a little bit of different of a wrinkle as Terramina checks in for Gunn. You know, they had success on that big, long drive there, but now Tarleton has been able to come and find an answer and slow down this straight-ahead run game. Maybe Minnesota State needs to take a little page out of the book of Tarleton and do exactly and this. P.I., no and flag, and, and the flag. And the flag comes in late as Devin Hafford will get flagged here for pass interference on Zilstra. You know. And Zilstra is pointing at where he's got some claw marks on his yeah. right arm. And, you know, that, that flag was drawn by Zilstra obviously but if Zilstra didn't turn around and play the ball and look at back at the quarterback good chance that wasn't called but good job by him of turning around trying to make a play on the ball defender runs into him regardless if it's accidental contact or on purpose still a flag and that's a huge uh field position shift there for the Mavericks here need to capitalize on this drive seven minutes left and one of the things that uh Zilstra did well even though he did not throw his hands up right away. And that's one thing that he did well. Because right. it caused Devin Hafford not to know Absolutely. where the ball was. So he threw his hands up late and threw up that one hand, which yep. made his other one show that he was actually being held. Yeah, you're 100% right. So that play was a very veteran move yes. by Shane Zilstra. And that was a nice two-yard run there by Gunn as it's second and eight. Yeah, you're 100% correct there. That was a very crafty veteran move in drawing that flag and making sure you definitely got the call instead of leaving it up to chance. And here's Slickty back to pass. Oh He's got God. Arnold with some separation, oh, and Arnold oh. slowed up just a bit as it looked like he just stopped running as he had himself about two yards of separation oh, on man. his... Oh, uh, man. Coverage, man, and that was Trey Johnson. How many times has this unfortunately happened to the Maverick offense through the course of this Division II football playoffs? So many chances of big plays and just slipping through the cracks. Sl a little too far, a little too short. Hopefully here in this last six and a half minutes, we'll find one that hits him right in the bread basket. And here is Schlichty. Is there going to go with the quarterback run? Is that oh, a nice block yeah. by Gunn? But the huge length of EJ speed trips up Schlichty, and that's a fourth down and seven. Yeah, that's a great play by speed because he had a chance to get to the edge. And you can see a little bit of frustration on Justin Arnold's face of not coming up with that. And we will see another punt from Bedarski. Is that going to be a 20 plus yard gain by Arnold? And here we go as the clock tips under six minutes to go in the game. As that's a great punt by Benarski as it goes at, it looks like, the 12-yard line. They're going to spot it. And that's another great punt by Casey Benarski. Yeah, definitely. When you can bury him deep and shift the field position, it's always a good thing. But I can only imagine head coach Todd Witten's got to be very pleased with the defensive adjustments that they made after that long drive as they've really come out and thwarted that straight straight ahead running game of the Mavericks there. And so you got to be pleased with that. And luckily for the leader and captain, Ben Holmes, that bonehead mistake he made did not come back to bite him. And he trots back out in the field with the Texans offense. As Minnesota State was given 30 yards in, for penalties given to them and they just couldn't have anything to show for it except for a couple penalties and you know it was just a complete another mm. you know a little bit of a disappointing offensive mm -hmm. drive there and Xavier Turner plows his way forward for a gain of three yeah that was a big hit he laid on the Maverick defender couldn't quite catch the number of it but he put the shoulder down and let him know hey I'm still here and I'm still a threat exactly he, he put truck stick on that <laughs> yes one. yes and here's the fake handoff Ben Holmes is looking oh get that ball get that he's ball. got contained a little bit but he breaks some tackles and he's 
pushed out of bounds by Tyshawn and Brooks, and that's a nice gain of 12. Yeah, he's shown he still has the elusiveness as the guy has ran for over 500 yards this season, as well as passing for 2,500 plus whatever he's gotten today. Um, but he is waving that ball around in one arm quite recklessly. You would hope the quarterback coach or offensive coordinator gets in his ear to let him know to hold it a little bit tight as a turnover here could prove very costly as we slip under five minutes ago. As he was trying to find some running room and he was just waving his arms just to try to gain his <laughs> balance. And here's Xavier Turner as Parrish Morrow comes up from the secondary to get that tackle. Yeah, if you're Minnesota State here, you got to kind of start going after that ball because this may be one of the last opportunities you get to keep them down here in this side of the field. And you you never know if you could get a turnover here just from a fumble in the conditions, a bad punt. You never know. So you really need to stick your chest out here and make a big play and keep this field position. As they're going to let this clock get down as far as possible each snap. As the game clock shows under 415 as the play clock shows five handoff to turner he'll bounce it out to the left side and that is a Great nice job. play by Jamie LaPlante to get him by the jersey and not allow him to go anywhere. Yeah, great job by Jamie. Long arm, short arm technique, being able to stay outside, outside leverage and make him have to try to bounce it up and around him. And here we go. This is one of the, if not the biggest defensive plays of the football game here. If not the season here. Right, for absolutely. State, is this could have some implications here on this play as it's third down and six ball on the 33 yard line and the clock shows 330 rpo ben holmes looking R to pass his amari great Mack. job jack curtis and jack curtis oh. is overshot there and samari manning was looking for a little something as jack curtis kind of got away with a little bit of a shove there but Nonetheless, that ball was overthrown, and here's Justin Arnold back deep here for Minnesota State. Well, we know the returnability of the Mavericks, although it hasn't been in any kind of conditions like this. Here's, a, excuse me, a huge opportunity for Justin Arnold to change his game and get excellent field position with 323 or 324 left in the game. Arnold standing on the 30-yard line as Ron Reed's punt is a good one. And that's going to bounce to about the 25 out of bounds at the 24-yard line. Yeah, and I think that was a very smart coaching decision as they told him just kick the ball away and we're going to live with wherever it falls there. As rightly so, you don't want to give a very good returner and Justin Arnold any kind of chance to make a play. And one of the things is here, clock shows 314 remaining. Minnesota State's got to march. 76 yards to at least get into the end zone but with Casey Benarsi you gotta look like with the wind and all that stuff 45 to 50 yards is what you kind of want from this drive alone to get Casey Benarsi comfortable to maybe possibly send this game right. in overtime and you, you that's all you can ask for is a chance really as Schl Schlichty's got some time oh, looking for man. Arnold as that ball was thrown a little short as the wind may have had something to do with that ball yeah. being short yeah i can't imagine that being the easiest throw ever as the wind is going against you and you got big number five ej speed bearing down on you uh put it at least he put it in one spot where only the receiver could make a play on it and we'll live to see another down exactly second down and 10 at the 24 yard line for minnesota state gun gets the handoff oh Bounces go it, gun go tackle. baby Gun. Oh He's my God! Oh my God! And he is loose down the sideline. Here's Nate Gun as he's in business. First down, Minnesota State. That is a huge run and nothing that we did not expect from number 23. Wow! What a huge run right there as that definitely surges them past. 300 yards on the ground today for the Maverick offense. They were just wow. at 292 right before that play. And another now up to 328 yards on the ground for the Maverick offense. And here is the, another handoff to Justin Terramina. He's wrapped up and thrown down aggressively by number 45, David Van Gupo. Yeah, that's a big man coming up and making a big stop there, creating a second and long here. 
Van Goopel is, like you said, a man at 6'2", 380. Yeah. He is a load. I I probably wouldn't want to try to block him at this point in my life. <laughs> Well, you're talking about you're in some great shape. Oh, oh I want to go that far. <laughs> As oh my God! Has got Arnold, but way overthrows his receiver yet again. I, I, you know, I get the conditions. I totally get the conditions here at this point. But man, one of these quarterbacks has got to make one of these throws. So many opportunities alone in this game again where you just put one on the money and it's game time, but unable to connect. Arnold had a couple, two, three yards in front of him and no one was going to catch him. See, that's one thing different with Ben Holmes. He's had himself his fair share of overthrows, but he's also connected right. with a lot of them. Absolutely. And he's given himself some time and it's just remarkable what his... That's uh, a hold on Nissen. And here yep. is... Yeah, uh, Schlichty as he gets the first down and then some. And as he's whipped out of bounds by Prince Robinson, and here comes a late flag. Wow, this ball is going to be I, well inside the 10 if I can do my math quickly here. Not my strong suit in school. <laughs> but they're going to, they have a hold on the tight end, number 86 here. Tyler Schmidt was held by, I believe, number five, EJ Speed. But then Schlichty getting to the edge, getting out of bounds and getting a late hit, I would have to assume they're going to decline the holding penalty here and add the 15 on to the end of the run. If I am thinking logically here as a football coach, I believe that is the ideal situation that you would want here. And I think that's the case if that's the actual call over there. As it was on the on defense. defense. So they'll decline that one, but they'll take the extra yes. 15. And that's on Prince Robinson, is that is another mistake that could cost Tarleton here as they're throwing yep. Minnesota State right near the goal line. Well, it's kind of a kind of a flip of tails of the two halves here. Yeah, the, has, Minnesota yes, State has. was making those kind of mistakes and having those penalties in the first half. And now Tarleton having some lapse in judgment there as Schlichty was clearly heading towards the sideline. He had no intent of going any further after he scampered for that first down. Now here we go. A number one team in a championship scenario yep. to keep their hopes alive. Yep. Everything's four down. Well, let me take that back before I. You're in territory now for three. Yes. Exactly. So if this is the how much do you scenario, trust it? The best case scenario <laughs> is that you go into old. Well, the best case scenario is that you touch plug out. In, right. But one of the. Well, least, having the opportunity exactly, not to exactly, lose. Exactly. Exactly. Having the opportunity not to lose, you got a for sure leg in Casey Minarski from this distance. You have no problem with it as they're inside the 15 He's and they're looking for oh Shane God. Silstra again oh as it's God. just overthrown. Oh, and the that, diving Silstra was right there and that second down and 10. You know, and that was the same same kind of route combination there with a little bit of a rub route between Arnold and Zilstra. That time, the corner, the outside corner stayed with Zilstra and it looked from our angle that Arnold had a wide open window but trying to get the big play to the big time receiver. And the handoff is the gun. Bounces it back yes. outside. He's got a block from Schlichty. Ah! Big gun. Six. <laughs> Reservations for six for Mr. Oh, gun. Oh, man. And now the score reads Mavericks 13. And the crowd Tarleton is State going 10. wild. The crowd on the Minnesota State sideline is going absolutely crazy. And now they're gonna go for two. I believe that's what the coaches are signaling, go for two, making it a uh, half the score a touchdown the win. So very heads up by the coaching staff right away, telling the offense to go to two. Cause at most they can tie it with a field goal and honestly, or obviously can win it with a touchdown regardless of the outcome of this. But if you get this two points, you're making that Tarleton State Texans offense half to score a touchdown with a buck 47 left. Now let's see what they draw up here. If they don't have a good play, I'd almost use a timeout in this instance. Yeah, Minnesota State's got all three of their timeouts. Tarleton State has two. And Schlichty drops back the pass. And he's oh, looking for geez. Arnold. And Not that even... is a little underthrown there as that was some of the fans are questioning that call. But <laughs> yeah. you know what? And it is what it is. You have the lead. You're up by three points. Now what you're wow. forcing them to do is it is fourth down 
territory no matter where you absolutely are the field State. yep you know we haven't we've only seen their kicker put a short little short little field goal in earlier today uh don't quite know the range of them as i did not get to see them during pre-game warm-ups um so that's kind of up in the air what the range of their kicker has here going forward to get in a tying position if need be but you got to hope Bedarski can get another booming kick keep it out of the end zone and don't let him get a touchback and make him drive 75 yards plus and here we go your championship team a number one team you fought back all game long made the correct adjustments played excellent football here in the second half against a very very tough opponent in the tarleton state texans now here's your chance to show why you are truly the number one seed and give yourself a berth into the national semifinals here in the ncaa division two football playoffs and the scoring summary on that drive seven plays 76 yards one minute and 27 seconds and that 13 yard touchdown run by nate gunn and schlichty had was my mvp of that drive yeah schlichty drawing that flag when he was going out of bounds and then not only was that he allowed gunn to get that sprint uh, spring to the edge as that was a key block as this that's exactly what they wanted right from here. here from benarski as prince robinson will take this one out and he's brought down at the 35, or at the 30, excuse me. That was a great job there by number 20A on the kick team for the Mavericks. Excuse me as I find his number here. Lucas Barrington, he did a great job of keeping his outside shoulder free and forcing the return man to stay inside. And here we go. Man, my heart's racing, Brian, as if I'm out there on the field right now. The excitement and enthusiasm on both sides of the field here. Here is playoff football at its finest. One drive, one chance on both sides to end it all and send someone home. Packing happens right See, now. My heart's just racing because I'm cold. <laughs> it's it set by the Minnesota State defense. And here is number 98, Chance Bowen. Zach Dodge and number 42, Jordan Bergren, as that was huge to start this drive. And I as the clock goes under um, and gets stopped, excuse me. Time out 30, by Tarleton. Ta time out by Tarleton. And that was huge. And the first time they've got to Ben Holmes so far this afternoon. Yeah, I think Ben Holmes made a bit of assumption that he's had very good success in stepping yes, up in the pocket yes, and yes. making something out of nothing all day. But a good job by the defensive line coach getting in the ear, telling the two D tackles, hey, you got to stay home. We got to collapse the pocket rather than trying to get to him, if that makes sense. You got to keep them in front of you. Don't let them get on the outside and beat you. And here we go. A minute 30 he left. Second down and 11. This is a chance for a number one team to shine right here. And here's Schlichty, Arnold, and uh, Trevor Nissen alongside Shane Zilstra as they're all taking a knee here and joined by J.D. Akawa. Screen. And here's a screen pass. This Ball dropped. Manning as it's dropped and incomplete. So Marty Manning was already having going downfield on his mind rather than just catching the ball. Yeah, I don't know if they've lost. It seems like Tarleton here over the second half of this fourth quarter has lost a lot of mental composure here and making very ill-advised mistakes. Maybe the weather and the loudness of this Minnesota State crowd setting in on them. Nothing and over the middle. Is ben Holmes. As and another soul. Oh, man. Zach Dodge just misses a sack. And here's Ben Holmes as he's got some room as he gains 18 on that first down run. That's a nice run and a nice first and that's what we are talking about ben holmes doing all day being able to make something out of nothing right there and being the leader and maybe making up for his mental mistake earlier able to get something going for this tarleton state offense and that was a nice play by sack dodge to come back and almost getting holmes as holmes has got all day oh. and it's right behind throwing behind number 18 is Savon rollison and that hits Parrish Morrow in the face mask as he huh. slips and falls. Yeah, I don't think he even really saw the ball because that thing came out on a beeline and just too far behind that was for a straight 
rocket. Yeah, I wouldn't want to catch that ball with my hands probably being as cold as they are. And the clock shows one minute exactly. Ben Holmes looking drop Baxter again. Kerman, and that's another drop by a Tarleton State wide receiver. And that's the second on as many attempts. Yeah, Tarleton State almost crumbling under this pressure here as they only got one timeout. So you know, regardless of some of the plays they make, you want to keep them out of field goal range, but if they run a play in bounds, Minnesota State's got to tackle them in bounds. Got to keep that clock going. This is really the only close game that they have faced all season. And here's Chance Bowen and Zach Robertson. And it's going to be a fourth down. And it's going to, in fact, be a fourth down as Ben Holmes is running out of real estate to try to get that first down as he'll be well short about three yards. And as I was alluding to, the pressure you said as it's fourth down and three they've only had two games this year yes decided by less than 10 points yep and it's almost common for both teams they exactly. have neither team has really been in a shootout well not a shootout but a close game like exactly. this where yep. a lot and the pressure has mounted each drive of this second half and it's culminated right here into this fourth down play and not only that as they're looking for Zamari Manning yet again and, a and that's a nice tackle by Jack Curtis Parrish Morrow and Zach Robertson as that will seal the deal here for Minnesota State and they're moving on to the quarterfinals. National semifinals. Oh, yeah, sorry, <laughs> no, you're it's... fine. We're all riled up here up in the booth. Unbelievable comeback victory by your Minnesota State Mavericks. Much credit to the Tarleton State Texans as they came in here and played their hearts out and played a great football game. But you can see the number one seed prevailing and overcoming so much adversity throughout, throughout this game. And guess what, Minnesota State Maverick fans, we get to keep the dancing shoes on for another week as we are now one game away from the NCAA Division II Football National Championship game. And one thing I gotta say here is I'm not truly a fan. I, I do like to uh, have myself with sportsmanship and pride. As I look on the sidelines, one of the things that kind of disappointed me was some of the Maverick players waving goodbye to the uh, child to say that's something that I don't highly encourage. And if you're watching at home, please do not copy that type of sportsmanship. I understand you got a lot going on and all that stuff, but do not stoop to that level, please. Please be respectful to your opponents. I understand you're going huh. to a place where you haven't been in a little while and you got to this point last year, but to me, it's just got to be class act and a little bit of cleaned up, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, but you don't, at the same time, too, I'm not in any kind of disagreement. You don't, some of the words that were probably exchanged out there, Starleton was very chippy early on, but nonetheless, your Minnesota State Mavericks are going to the national semifinals on the back, quite honestly, of Nate Gunn. Right here, Minnesota State rushed the ball 71 times for 350 yards. And, and what an effort. A, and this was on a rushing defense that only allowed minus one coming in to the previous two games. So to me, that is quite remarkable. And you are watching Maverick football here on the NBA Network. We will be right back with the post-game wrap-up. Wow. Unbelievable.
welcome to the post-game wrap-up alongside my partner, Jordan O'Grady. I'm Brian Kelly. And Jordan, what stood out to you the most in this football game? Well, you know, the fight to overcome adversity by our Minnesota State Mavericks in a dogfight, playing from behind all game long. And, you know, you could feel the enthusiasm and pressure of uh, Ryan Schlichty. He almost willed this team to victory and then on the ground with Nate Gunn. Impressive, impressive performance by Nate Gunn as the Mavericks rush the ball 71 times for exactly 350 yards today. Unbelievable second half effort. Overcame a lot of bad plays and mistakes early on in the first half to come in and finish off what they had started early on in the second half. You know, but defensively, you got to be very, very pleased with number 17, Jack Curtis. Faced with a difficult challenge all day against Zamari Manning and uh, FP Thomas, excuse me. JF, JF, JF Thomas. Thomas, excuse me. I apologize. But that's no small feat to come out here as a backup corner and make the plays he did all day, causing disruption in the passing game, overthrows, and just balls that couldn't quite possibly complete it. All around. It's only going to get tougher from here, but this Maverick team has proved to be built for the long haul, and now they are just one game away from playing for the whole kit and caboodle, and I think they got the tools necessary in place to do so. Quarterback play still wasn't necessarily the greatest, but did just enough late in the game with that beautiful ball to Zilstra, more so a beautiful catch too by him in the corner of the end zone. So the Mavericks prevail, not without much adversity and a lot of uncharacteristic mistakes early on in the game. But nonetheless, they found a way to seal it off with a Nate Gunn run to the far side of the end zone to go up 13-10. And then that defense came back and made play after play in that last drive and sealed the deal for your Mavericks. And of course, when the game's over, so does the snow stop. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just amazing how that works. And when we're taking a look here at this, the whole game and momentum shift was due to that possession time. Yeah for Minnesota State in that third quarter. They held the ball for 11 minutes and 15 seconds, 16 seconds roughly. Yep. So to me, that is something quite remarkable as before the 10 minute mark in the fourth quarter, Tarleton State only held the ball two times in the second half. Yeah. And they were all three and outs. Yep, and that, and that Minnesota State defense, and we talked about it there near the end of the game, it was a great job by the defensive linemen of staying in their lanes, not getting pushed out of position or getting too far afield because we knew the athletic ability of court, number two quarterback uh, Ben Holmes for Tarleton State. He had the ability to move in the pocket, get outside and create things on his own. But the great job by the defensive coordinator Jim Golgowski and the whole entire Maverick defense of able to come back absolutely shut down that run game of Tarleton save that going into the game had been electric yes. you know both two backs over a thousand yards on the season and Xavier Turner in his own right having 22 touchdowns on the ground and that's a very successful year and much congratulations to them on the success they had this season but the better team and maybe with a little luck and a little faith was able to overcome that two possession deficit in the second half and really assert themselves on the ground game. I mean, that one drive, as you spoke of, 27-play yeah. drive. In 97 yards cards. and 12 minutes and 9 seconds knocked yep. off. And, you know, in a lot of football games, 27 plays, that's that's half of the total plays an yeah. offense will run. Maybe and even in the first quarter sometimes. Right, exactly. And, you know, they did an outstanding job. The adjustments they made up front, and you got to give credit to that offensive line, asserting themselves and getting after those athletic and big defensive linemen of Tarleton State. And all the credit there to Colin Prost, their offensive line coach here, for having a great week of practice and letting and getting them the information and the technique to be this successful. And Schlichty, you know, neither quarterback necessarily had a greatest day not their worst day but the sheer leadership of Ryan Schlichty I think was uh, monumental in this come from behind win today and able to keep everyone focused in in line and working as one solid unison group so all the credit to Schlichty there and maintaining and doing just enough to get the Mavericks over the hump and he he was the one that put that block there on the right edge to put Nate Gunn into the end zone so and that put the Minnesota State 
Mavericks up by three, and they went for two, and that came up a little short. One thing I want to hype, uh, hype up is the play of the offensive line in the second half. Yeah. Shutting down EJ Speed, well, that's kind of hard to do. He got himself his fair share of tackles, but getting to the quarterback is something he don't didn't do when we started to pass the ball. And then yep. alongside that, uh, Gary Moore, we didn't see much of him in the second half, but we shut him down when he was on the field. And then also Jay Edwards coming up with a pick uh, when Akawa threw that interception, but from the pressure of none other than EJ Speed. Right. But it was that offensive line that really did come to play and was the difference maker here in this matchup. And, and, and that's certainly true, very true. And, you know, when you get into the playoffs like this and any level of football, you almost kind of pick your poison, if you will, of what you think is the least, the least thing that's going to beat you. And I think today they thought that the elusiveness of Ben Holmes was going to be something that take over. And, of course, the running game. Yep. Um, they, they was well documented to them all week that they knew what they're going to get out of um, – Xavier Turner and company and they did a great job of slowing it down from the very beginning and of course the weather definitely played a factor in that and slowing down their elusiveness because early on they were just very patient running the ball and waiting for that backside lane or play side lane to open up for that matter of fact and they just did a good job of rallying to the football and making group tackles much like Tarleton State did that whole first half but Tarleton just kind of lost a little bit of mental stability and a little bit of composure there a uh, big penalty there you know it didn't result in points or anything but the uh, loss of composure there by ben holmes and getting that penalty big momentum swing and then the late hit out of bounds you know all those little things that added up finally at the end for tarleton state and and uh, you know it backfired on them and msu being the veteran based team they are were able to capitalize all on that and able to get the ball across the white line just enough to get themselves to a national semifinal game yeah two things i want to touch on before we go one you knew xavier turner coming in this game was the biggest matchup you had to face on the defensive side shutting him down 20 plus carries 76 yards yeah that's 40 yards under what he averages a game absolutely that is something to me that is quite remarkable of a thing to do on the defensive side of the ball when Ben Holmes early was kind of throwing the ball at will. Yeah, and you know, Ben Holmes made the most of what he could do in that passing game all day. He, you know, he quite honestly was probably the best quarterback on the field today in terms of performance. And the couple big, the big play down the right sideline here, the far sideline to uh, Manning, and then a couple of the nice touch balls along the same sideline going the other way, dropping it into some tight windows and his receivers making big catches. But then on the back side of it here at the end of the game, receivers came in and let him down because he put some balls on some wide open receivers there in the fourth quarter. And then in the last two drives that they just flat out dropped without any uh, contestedness, if you will, from the Minnesota State defense. So, hey, Minnesota State made enough plays to pull out, and it only gets tougher now. The competition doesn't get any lesser than what it was today, and I'm, look I'm looking forward to it. Unfortunately, now our season for us is over because the big boys in ESPN are going to come in, which is unfortunate to us. But nonetheless, it's been a great year up here in the booth yeah. with you, Brian, and I'm just glad I got to have this experience yeah. and share it with you. Exactly. As it, This was just great, and to the hardworking crew that's here in the booth with us right now and everyone involved in the Maverick football family and the broadcasting network, it's been a true pleasure and yeah. couldn't expect much more coming exactly. out from Vermont exactly. this year. Exactly. <laughs> Four words. Four words. Nate Gunn. <laughs> yep. What in the world was that performance? That was huh. something I have never seen in a college football game. No, I mean, I've never seen a stat line where football teams ran the ball 71 times. That's just absolutely incredible. And to go over 300 yards, I mean you do what you can you take what you get and they took a lot today on the ground and yeah. outstanding performance by this coaching staff i must say because they, they you know flat out we got beat that first half and weren't playing good football but the experience and the knowledge of this staff here at minnesota state being in these playoff games now this is the 14th playoff game that we've hosted since 2009 you take that experience and that really showed having that experience because not once did I feel that they um, 
lost themselves in this game. Same. They they were confident the whole time and kept sticking to their guns and doing what they do the best. And they stuck to the number 23 gun who quite literally ground and pounded and paved the way to victory for the Mavericks in star-studded performance by number 23, Nate Gunn. And like you said before, thank you. First of all, a shout out to our athletic director, Paul Allen for setting all of this up for us. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts yes. for letting us do this alongside Jordan O'Grady. I'm Brian Kelly. Thank you to everybody on staff, Robert, Big Sam, Z, and all the other guys that are up here. I can't thank you guys enough yeah. for what you've done for us this season. It has been a great season of Maverick football. Your Mavericks come from behind with 13 unanswered to win the game over Tarleton State in a matchup versus one and six. They win it of a final score of 13 to 10. Alongside my partner Jordan or Jordan O'Grady, I'm Brian Kelly. We will be over there at 5:30 to call the men's basketball game. So stay tuned and look for us there. Thank you and thank you for a great season. You fans are amazing. Thank you. And go Mavericks. Ha, ha, ha.